floor yet. And why aren't you out there in that marvelous surf this morning? Oh, I haven't read the paper yet. I don't come to life until I've read the paper. <laughs> Bother the paper. I thought you were out here on a holiday. Well, I have to find out what's going on in the world. That's the penalty of owning the biggest and the best newspaper in the country. I have a few days left in which to get to a well-known surf. Then you're definitely taking the clipper back on Friday. But definitely. I'm sorry I can't persuade you to take the boat back with Dad and me. I'd like to, but you know that clipper gets there faster. Oh, here comes your man Friday. Oh, Kate told with the newspapers. Well, I'll be running along. Aloha. I observe the Sentinel is carrying an extra page of advertising. I guess Gunnigan's new assistant, Harper, must know his business. Mr. Gunnigan knows his business, too, Mr. Britt. He is a first-class managing editor. Ah, uh, sure, I just came from having a talk with poor Gunnigan. That broken leg of his is going to keep him in the hospital for another month. You know, I've been wondering about that accident. Did he ever tell you how it happened? Well, it was like this. Gunnigan was going home one night from the office in a taxi. When all of a sudden, a big truck... <laughs> and the first thing Gunnigan knew, he didn't know anything. I wonder if that really was an accident. I always thought poor Gunnigan was framed. And by some of the crooks who object to the Sentinel's campaign against racketeers. True for you, Casey. With Gunnigan in the hospital and this fellow Harper... Is he in there? No. With this fellow Harper he appointed to take his place running the paper, the racketeers are getting away with murder. They certainly are, Axford. Now take the lottery racket. You take it. Sure, I hate to touch it. Well, if Mr. Reed were here, he'd certainly lose no time in exposing that racket. Well, why don't Harper do something about it? I don't know. Well, with due respect for Gunnigan's judgment, I don't trust Harper. Well, I got to go to the district attorney's office. You know, he's starting an investigation of this racket. Wasn't that a private investigation? <laughs> Leave that to me. Sure, I did the DA a lot of favors when I was a cop. <laughs> oh, it's a good thing you got flat feet, man of action, or I'd have bowled you over. Flat feet, is it? Now, you... Well, sure, now, they're better for understanding than a flat head like yours, Mr. Lowry. <laughs> you young smart <laughs> Cute kid. You better follow him. Why, where's he going? DA's office. Yeah? Said the DA was going to expose the lottery racket. Hmm, that's for me. This is Harper reporting. All right, come in. I sent for you, Harper, because you're falling down on the job. In what way, Mr. Crockett? I got you the job on the Sentinel by forging credentials for you from a Paris newspaper. Well, if I hadn't known Gunnigan from the early days, he'd never have given me the job, despite your credentials. But the accident I arranged, putting Gunnigan in the hospital, was responsible for him appointing you to his place. You've done very well by the Sentinel, but what have you done for our syndicates? I'm publishing daily a quarter page disbursement ad, giving the winning numbers in the syndicate lottery. Naturally, since I put you in charge of our lottery business... I have as great an interest in all the syndicate business. Listen, Harper, you know what your job was. To dispose of Britt Reed and to cripple his paper so that the syndicate could buy it outright. Well, that takes time. You've had plenty and you failed. Now I'm warning you for the last time, Britt Reed must be disposed of before he leaves a boy. You may go. Not that way. Use the private elevator. Boys, I'm proud of you. This is just the kind of thing that Mr. Reed would like to see in his paper. Boy, was that a scoop. The DA didn't hold back a thing. Don't forget who did the scooping. <laughs> sure, them racketeers will be shaking in their boots when they read that exposure. What racketeers? What exposure? Well, answer me. Well, it's a story about the lottery racket that the boys dug up in the DA's office this morning, Mr. Harper. Lottery racket? What's it about? Well, I told you. Sure, it's a scheme by which the racketeers take the pennies away from the poor. Well, it's just the type of thing that Mr. Reed will crusade against if he were here. Who assigned you to this story, Axford? Well, sure, I dug it up myself from the DA. He's looking for free publicity when he starts making a mountain out of a molehill. Playing for pennies can't hurt anybody. But we heard the testimony about suicides. Ridiculous. This story isn't worth the price of putting it in type. Next time you start an investigation, consult me first. Yes, sir. 
For the next few days, I'm assigning you to the cattle country in the northern part of the state. Is there something up there you want to have investigated? Yes. Find out if they expect a drought this year. And if so, why? Well, of all the... Wait! Wait till Reed gets back. There's something crooked going on here. And it's up to us to find out what it is. You know, before we go back to the mainland, we really ought to go to one of those, uh... Those native feasts, what do you call them? A uh, luau, you mean? Yes, a luau. <laughs> A cablegram just arrived from Miss Case, Mr. Britt. Well, how do you know it's from Case? She is the only one who has your address. Oh, that's right. Case is my right-hand woman. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll have to answer this. Will you excuse me just a minute? I have oh. brought cable brank and pencil, Mr. Britt. Thank you. The chief says you've got to make a few changes in your staff. Why? They're getting too nosy. Well, I was going to... What do you want? When you found no one in the outer office, why didn't you knock? Cable addressed to Miss Case. I'm taking no chances. This is a job for you, Bordine. Leaving here next Friday, China Clipper. Signed, Reed. Reed must never leave Hawaii. Well, that'd be a nice trip. And a chance to get even with Reed for trying to send me to the chair instead of Kirk for that Sweeney murder. Well, Clipper leaves here for Hawaii tomorrow morning. That'll get you there in time. We've got to talk this over with the boss. Come on. There's Reed now. They're coming this way. I don't know why you can't come back on the boat with us. There's only a few days' difference between the boat and the clipper. Why don't you persuade your father to go back on the clipper? Good evening, Reed. Oh, good evening, sir. Hello, Dad. Well, Gloria, it's time we started. We're going to that luau. Why don't you come along, Britt? That's right, Dad. You make him come. Well, where is it going to take place? At a native village about halfway between here and Halavia. I'd like to go. I'll tell you what, I have some work to do. You'll go on ahead and I'll join you there later. Grant. Bye-bye. Bye. You know where they're having this luau? Sure. I know everything that happens around here. What's your plan? It's a cinch. I'll get my boys. We'll trail Reed's car when he leaves the luau, we'll jump him, and only the sharks off Diamond Head will know what happened. Sounds easy. Let's get started. It's near morning. If I don't get back, I'll miss the clipper. <laughs> and the clipper waits for no man. Oh, well, it's been a glorious night. I'm awfully glad I came. Let's go find your father and the rest of the party. Right. Reed and his servant are just leaving. Anybody else with them? Just the driver. Three of them, eh? We can handle them. You drive the car. Diamond Head now without being seen. What do we do with them then? Let's take them up to my fishing shack and keep them there till tonight. All right? Yeah, that's all right. Hurry up, boys. Throw them in the back room. Trusted. Reed recognized me, and it wouldn't be healthy for me if he escaped. Don't worry. Reed and that Oriental haven't a chance in the world. 
I'll come back tonight and finish the job. All right, then. We'll return to my hotel and I'll pay you off. I'm pulling out on the steamer that leaves this morning. Mr. Brett, there are three guards in that outer room. I heard them say last night that they were going to throw us in the ocean tonight. <laughs> if we let them. Say, I recognize the fellow that drove the car. He's Bourdain, a crook. Hey, what about that meat cleaver? It suggests something. the boat. And to report Bourdain to the police. I'll bet he's on the clever. I'll cable the authorities to meet it on his arrival. Why weren't you on deck? Shut that door. What's biting you, big boy? Brucus fell down on the job. You mean he didn't fix Reed? How do you know? Reed and his pal are on board. That means I'll have to lay low all the way across. Well, I don't see why. You've got him where you want him. And as soon as it's dark, you'll be a fool. That'd give the ship's officers four days for an investigation. Remember, I've got a record. Well, then what are you going to do? Lay low, like I told you. Now, the captain's ball takes place the last night of our voyage. There'll be plenty of excitement aboard. I'll be safely ashore before they discover there's a passenger missing. What's the matter, Gloria? Nothing serious. I'm just not a very good sailor, I'm afraid. I think I'd better go to my cabin. All right. I feel better now. I'll rest for a few moments and join you later. I'll call you back to my cabin and see if you're feeling all right. I'm sure I will be. Good night. Good night. What's the matter, Cato? Fourteen is on the steamer. Are you sure? Yes, Mr. Pritt. I saw him on deck and followed him to his cabin. It's room 97 on B deck. Come, I'll show you. Wait a minute, not so fast. I just can't make it out. He must have known for four days that we've been on this boat. And has made no further attempt on our lives. Oh, that's the mystery. Bourdine has a lot of information that I need. Uh, I'd give a thousand dollars right now if I had the Green Hornet outfit. Thank you, Mr. Pritt. I can use that thousand dollars very nicely. What? You mean you have it? Good. I thought it best not to leave it in your apartment. If your building caught fire, or should someone find it... Yeah, it would be difficult to explain. I think so, Mr. Pritt. Now, Cato, Mr. Bourdine is about to tell me for whom he's working. And some other things I want to find out. I'm sure he will, sir. You know, he collected a reward of five grand from the state when he turned in Kirk for Sweeney's murder. And he knew all the time Kirk was innocent. I'd like to return that money to the state. The mask. Don't follow me too closely. 
We mustn't be seen together on deck. Here's the gas gun. And remember, room 97, B deck. Right. Tonight, the Green Hornet strikes again. <laughs> The Green Hornet. You guessed right, Bordine. Keep your hands in the clear. What do you want? A number of things. But first, why were you in Honolulu? I was sent to Hawaii to put Reed out of commission. What have you got against Reed? Who sent you? Is this a laugh? It was Harper, the guy who's running Reed's newspaper while he's away. He's a big shot in the syndicate. The head of the lottery racket. The lottery racket, eh? With a million a month rake off. That's a pretty good guess. Why are you so interested? That's my business. And you want to cut in, eh? I am cutting in, Bordine, and you're helping me. But first, I want to clear up one matter. I don't get you. I'll explain. Sit down at that desk. Now, write down what I dictate. I, the undersigned, confess to the murder of Patrolman Pat Sweeney. I'm confessing nothing. It wasn't murder. I killed Sweeney in self-defense. Yet you pinned a charge of murder on Kirk, an innocent man who was sent up for life. It was Kirk's fault the cops caught up with me. And you collected a reward of $5,000 from the state for turning in Kirk. Fire's been discovered in the hold, sir. It's almost beyond control already. Fire in the hold? Yes, sir. Order all men at their stations. All passengers on deck. Send out an SOS. I'll go to the bridge right away. me go now? I'm asking the questions. Hand me over your wallet. I'm collecting the Sweeney reward money. It's all I got, Hornet, about $2,500. Not so fast, Bordine. Now answer my questions, quick. Who's behind Harper? Who's the head of the syndicate? I can't tell that. I can't. It means certain death for me. Answer my questions. I can't. They'll kill me. I can escape the police, but not the syndicate.
Send every available cutter to the aid of the Paradise. Five is an SS Paradise being landed in Pier 21. Contact all hospitals for ambulance service. Send special detail in Pier 21. That's fine, and thanks very much. I hope you get all right. <laughs> Suffering snakes, Lowry. Do you see what I'm seeing? Look, Britt, there's Father. I'll join him. Britt Reed. Goodbye, Gloria. I'll see you later. And thanks. <laughs> Reed, my boy, are you all right? Hello. Oh, oh gee. Oh, 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 sure, it is a sight for sore eyes to be seeing you. Nobody had any idea you were on that ship. Boy, is this a scoop for the summer, or is this a scoop? We come down here to get eyewitness stuff and find you on board packing a whole story. I'll dictate it on the way to the office. Hold Miss Case and tell her to hold the presses for an extra. Okay, Chief. Oh, oh Britt, how about a little exclusive story for myself while the kid's busy on the phone? All right, Cato, give him the story. Oh, but I, uh... Hello? Yes, Laura. What's that? Mr. Reed on the Paradise. Well, is he all right? Oh, I'm so glad. And he wants the press's help for an extra. All right, I'll have the men in the composing room stand by. Tell Mr. Reed how delighted we are that he's back and safe. Get that story in right away, Lowry, and tell him to rush it. Yes, sir. Hello, Casey. Hello. I can't tell you how glad we are to have you back. Well, I'm certainly glad to be here. There are a number of things that need your attention, but I suppose you'd like to rest first. I'll straighten things out. Rest later. Well, well, Mr. Reed, it's quite a surprise to see you. We, we didn't expect you. We had no idea you were on the Paradise. How's Gunnigan? He'll be able to leave the hospital in a few weeks. That's fine. I'm glad to hear that. We need Gunnigan on this paper. Well, I believe you'll find that my services have been very satisfactory. The advertising has increased considerably. That's good, if it's the right kind of advertising. Uh, we're safe on that score. I had everything checked by Gunnigan. I, I consulted him daily. All right, Mr. Hopper. I'll talk with Gunnigan tonight at the hospital. I'll see you in the morning. Well, very well, Mr. Reed. Uh, I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night. Reed's alive and back on the job. Harper's failed again. He insisted on sending Bordine on a job he should have done himself. You know, Krogan, I never did trust that guy Harper. I always figured that if he ever slipped up on a European lottery racket, he'd give the syndicate the double cross. You're right, Tower. It's up to you to take care of Harper. I understand. And I know exactly where he'll be hiding out. In that old house he inherited from his sister. Take Ringo with you. He's the best trigger man in town. I leave everything to you. Take the private elevator. And don't miss on this job. Cato, we have two very important jobs to do tonight. I understand, Mr. Britt. We will call on Mr. Harper. Oh, yes. And we'll deliver to the district attorney's home Bordine's confession that he killed Sweeney and the money he collected for turning in Kirk. and keep your eye on the house. I may need you. Don't tell her. Don't. It was just an accident we got back to America. It wasn't my fault. You know the penalty for failure, Harper. I have my orders for the chief. I have you covered. Reach. The Green Hornet. Drop that gun. Drop that gun, I say. 
Get Harper. Not so fast, Harper. Get down from there. You saved my life on it. Those crooks were going to bump me off. For what reason? I found out too much about their rackets. Especially the lottery racket, which you've been handling for the syndicate. I had nothing to do with the lottery racket. This is a confession from Bordeen that he killed Pat Sweeney. And this is part of the reward money he collected for turning in Kirk. I know all about you, Harper. And I'm cutting in on that European lottery racket. And a lot more that your syndicate is handling. Oh. So that's it. All right, Hornet. What's your proposition? First, I want you to give me a complete list of all the rackets the syndicate is handling. Well, they have a tie-up with all the important rackets in the country. And the lottery racket alone brings in about a million a month. Well, you've come pretty close to it. Now come clean, Harper. What's the name of the outfit, and who's the head? Oh, I... I can't tell you that. Yes, you can. And I'm going to make you. But don't shoot. I'll... I'll... I'll tell you. The name of the... Are you all right? What happened to the other rat? I got his gun, but he escaped. Both these men were killed? Harper was killed by that shot from the window. I used my gas gun on the other. Keep watch outside. They must have heard the shooting. Come on, Cato. We're going to the DA's office. We got part of what we came for. The police will do the rest. Morning, boss. What do you think of my Harper story? That's all right. Sit down. Who do the police think killed Harper? Well, they figured that the Hornet, by bumping off Harper, was getting even with the Sutton for offering a reward for his capture. Oh, by the same token, now that I'm back on the job, I suppose the Hornet will be after me, huh? That's what the district attorney thinks, and so does the police. By the way, what was your candid opinion of Harper? Boss, I always thought that Harper had some tie up with the racketeers. I'm afraid you're right. I want you to call on a friend of his, a Mr. J.E. Lynch. Lynch? I know him. He's a lawyer. He called here several times to see Mr. Harper. Tell him you want all the dope on the European lottery. Also, tell him that Harper was very careless about leaving his memorandum book around where it could be found. Also, I'm on my way. Case, is Axford there? No, Mr. Reed. When he comes in, tell him I want to see him. Yes? What? He might be bluffing. Give him a cross-exam and find out how much he really knows. Lynch says that Lowry, a Sentinel reporter, is in his office demanding all the dope on the European lotteries. That's bad. He says that Britt Reed found a memorandum book containing a lot of information in the desk Harper was using at the Sentinel. That means that Britt Reed will start an investigation, and when that news out starts to investigate, he never stops. I'll stop him. How? I'll close all our lottery offices today. But that'll cut off a lot of revenue. It's the only way we can stop Reed's investigation. Yes? All right, admit that you were. And tell him that as Harper's attorney, you're closing all the European lottery offices today. Yes. I'd give a hundred grand to know just how much information was in that memo book concerning our enterprises. It might be worth a lot more than that. Holy crow, have I got a beat. I was over to see my friend, the district attorney, and what do you think happened? He made you his deputy. Yes, he did. No, no. But he told me that it is his own. Plenty of time for that. Sit down. I want some information. Yes. Do you know anything about the Colton Ammunition Company? Do I know? Didn't I lose me three months' salary buying a bunch of their worthless stock? You remember, Mr. Reed. They got a large order for shells from Europe. Oh, and then they floated a stock issue for money to expand their plant. Yes, and then a lot of serious accidents happened, and part of the building was destroyed. And the company went broke. And a lot of poor devils like me lost their shirts. Did Harper ever mention the Colton plant? Not in my hearing. But we did carry several half-column want ads for mechanics and machinists for the company that bought Colton's out. Oh, ho. 
And that might explain the note in this memo book that Harper was so careless to leave behind. And what does the note say? It says, word Colton want ads in manner to attract kind of men we can handle. By all the saints. Didn't I tell you, Casey, that Harper was tied up with the crooks? Michael, get your car. You and I are going out to the Colton plant to investigate the new setup. Sure, it's parked right across the street and rare to go. I'm here to see Mr. Foley, your superintendent. Have you an appointment? Tell him Brick Reed of the Sentinel is here to look over the plant. Call Foley on the phone. Is this the main entrance? This is the only entrance. And no one is allowed to enter but employees. All right. This way. But, Foley, I tell you, we can't allow this Reed to go snooping around the plant asking questions. He knows every ex-convict in the city. He'll recognize some of the workmen. Do you think he'll recognize you? Sure he will. And keep out of sight. I certainly will. Hello? This is Foley. Connect me with Krogan. Yes? What? Rip Reed? Yeah. Reed and his bodyguard Axford are here to look over the plant. I'll let them through the gate. They're waiting in the guard's office. Well, don't let them go beyond your office. Tell them you have strict orders not to admit anyone to the plant but employees. This is my chance to dispose of Reed. It certainly is. Reed's attempt to investigate our Colton plant is further proof that Harper's book furnished him with a complete list of our enterprises. I'll stop Reed's investigation if it's the last thing I do. All right, now I'll tell you, Michael. Sir. Foley, if you don't let us go through your plant, I'm turning the whole thing over to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I've got my orders, and I'm going to enforce them. Who gives you your orders? The president of the company, Mr. Colton. Colton sold out. He's still president, and besides, you're wasting a lot of my time. If you don't want to waste more time in the hospital, keep a civil tongue in your head. Michael. There they go. Pull out. We lay for them at Dead Man's Curve. Well, just as sure as you're alive, the new setup now controlling the Colton plant is a bunch of saboteurs. I agree with you there. If I plug them here, their car might go over that cliff. Keep your motor running. Here they come. The police, get going and step on it. Murdering devils, I'd like to... You know, we're lucky to be alive, Michael. Those fellows would have finished us off if the police car hadn't come along chasing those speeders. Sure, I wish I had me automatic. Them crooks is likely to come after us again. You're right. Pull out and step on it. We can beat them back to town. And with half the workmen in our plant ex-convicts, and our storage vaults packed with bombshells for a foreign government, an FBI investigation wouldn't be any too healthy for us, would it? I'll say it wouldn't. All right, now listen. By this time tomorrow, the Colton plant will be just a big hole in the ground. What do you mean? For two months, I've been selling the Colton plant outright to Mr. Grinson, agent for the foreign government we've been making big shells for. You mean that Grinson's going to take over the Colton plant? He thinks he is. Lynch, our attorney, has been handling the deal. He's already been paid 400 grand in cash. Tonight, Grinson makes his final pay, 100 grand. At your house, Foley. Well, why my house? It's the most convenient place from which the foreign agent can mysteriously disappear. Tower will take care of that after Lynch receives the final payment. I'll see to that part of it. Then our pilot, Tanjis, will bomb the Colton plant from the air. After I remove the guards, of course. Okay, Krogan. Well, why destroy the plant? With this rigid investigation going on, manufacturing large shells for a foreign government is too risky an enterprise even for our syndicate. Tonight, Cato, the Green Hornet is going to call on Mr. Foley, superintendent of the Colton ammunition plant. We will go to the Colton plant? No. We're going to Foley's home. It's 10 miles out on the highway, north of the Red River drawbridge. 
Tonight, the Green Hornet strikes again. The amount is correct, Mr. Grinson. A hundred one thousand dollar bills. You have my receipt and bill of sale ready for me, Mr. Lynch? Here they are, sir, in perfect order. They're correct. And now, gentlemen, the coat and ammunition plant belongs to my government. And operations will be carried on, is it present? No. There'll be a drastic change in the personnel. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Good evening sir. Mr. Grinston. There's someone leaving. Shall I follow them? No. Wait here. Now I'll phone Krogan the good news. That'll be his signal to destroy the Colton plant. Now. Oh, you better use the phone in the hall. I'm expecting a long distance. A hundred grand. It's the final payment of a half a million on the Colton plant. The syndicate certainly cleaned up big on that deal. Yeah, considering the very low price we paid Colton for it. And after we put the plant on the skids. Keep your hands in the clear. The Green Hornet. Surprised to see me, eh? I'll take over that hundred grand, and you crooks are going to answer some important questions. Get over. This car bulletproof. It sure is. Pull up as close as you can. I've got to give that crook a shot of gas.
away. But I got the hundred thousand dollars in that briefcase. You're not hurt? No, not much. I jumped before the car hit the water. The others? They're both gone. Hurry and get to the car. We still may have time to capture the man I left gassed at Foley's. You understand, Cato, that this hundred thousand dollars is the property of the stockholders of the old Colton Company that failed. Yes, Mr. Britt. Axford was one of those stockholders. He told me the new company that took over the plant were crooks. That's right. Now, the stockholders mustn't know that the money comes from me. I'll take good care of that. No, no, not that way. You might run into Axford. Take the back door and mail them at the post office. You sure threw the adjectives in your description of the errors, Lowry. There's plenty of blarney in them lines. Maybe he's figuring on marrying the million. I understand she doesn't like reporters. Oh, she don't, don't she? Well, who is she to be controlling a big company the government's liable to be depending on in case of war? You don't mean she's really going to control it. She could if she wanted to. She owns three-fourths of the voting stock. She can make herself chairman of the board and run the whole show if she likes. You're right. And what a small chance for a villain. Good morning, boss. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What do you mean, a chance for a villain? Well, in the present world situation, aluminum is one of the most important products in the manufacture of war materials. Of course, but I still don't see... It's this way. Aluminum Products Incorporated controls the aluminum market. Francis Grayson controls aluminum products. Now, if some shrewd, unscrupulous person should get control of Francis Grayson... Our first step is to find an actress whose statue and features are sufficiently like those of Francis Grayson Pass muster after a clever makeup. Say, Chief, I know where I can dig up a Jane that's a dead ringer for this Grayson gal, and she's a clever actress. Who is she? Her name's Stella Moya. Never heard of her. She's famous for her impersonations. And with a little makeup, she could deceive Miss Grayson's own mother. Miss Grayson has no mother, nor any other relatives, fortunately for us. Can this Stella Moya be trusted? Stella can be absolutely loyal. She's paid enough. Bring her up tomorrow by the private elevator, blindfolded. Well, anything more? Yeah, this Britt Reed seems to have a fifth sense in probing into things that we're interested in. This editorial in the Sentinel on the death of Grayson says in part, the Sentinel feels sure stockholders will hesitate to entrust leadership of the highly important aluminum products company to the inexperienced 21-year-old Miss Frances Grayson, who inherited that exalted position from her uncle, Homer Grayson. Well, you had your order to take care of Reed. Why don't you execute it? Well, he's pretty well guarded. Been waiting for a chance to do a job that wouldn't implicate us. It's imperative that you act at once. I guess your hunch about aluminum products was all wrong, boss. As far as I can find out, everything's under control. All right, Lowry. Hey, by the way, when does Miss Grayson arrive? She sails from London in about 10 days. Why, does it make any difference? It might. You remember that memo book we got from Harper? There was a mention in it of Homer Grayson. That's her father. That's interesting. We know that Harper was definitely connected with the crime syndicate. Here it is. Apparently, it's an order from somebody. It reads, in the event of Homer Grayson's death, consult me before publishing anything about it. Of all the crooks. Boss, who do you think sent Harper that order? I'd give a lot to know. Probably the head of the crime syndicate. They're after the Grayson millions. You want to warn the Grayson company. I intend doing that at once. I'm going to call on Kenneth North. He's vice president in charge of production out there. He's an old friend of mine. Oh, tell Axford to bring his car around to the front of the building. Yes. Hello, Ken. Oh, glad to see you, Britt. Glad to see you. Oh, this is Michael Axford, one of my reporters. How do you do, sir? Thank you, Chef. Uh, that was a splendid editorial that you wrote about the death of Mr. Grayson. We all appreciate it. What can I do for you? What's going to be the new setup around here when Miss Grayson returns? Miss Grayson simply gives proxies to the board of directors. You hope she will. But by golly, you can't depend on women. I knew one once. Michael. <laughs> now tell me, Britt, what's on your mind? Well, as you know. All right, Stella, you can take off the bandage. Boy, that's your blindfold, you all right? I ain't seen a thing since I got into that car. That was the intention, Miss Moya. And you'll be taken away from here in the same manner. There is a general resemblance to Miss Grayson. 
But, uh... Oh, wait till she gets through with her makeup, Chief. All right, Stella, there's a mirror over there. Here's a picture of Miss Grayson. Get busy. Huh. This'll be easy. So, Ken, that's the whole story. I appreciate your interest, Britt. But I'm sure that Miss Grayson will not take any active part in the operation of the company. I hope not. Well, if I need help, I'll certainly call in the Sentinel. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Axford. Goodbye, sir. So long, Ken. Bye. Perfect, eh, Krogan? Very good, so far as appearances go, but there's much more to it than that. Miss Grayson, will you please tell this gentleman what you propose to do about Aluminum Products Incorporated? Well, I shall do nothing about it, really. What does one do about such things? I shall sign some of those, uh... Is it proxies, you call them? One of our cultured gentlemen will accompany you to Liverpool. You understand what you're to do. Leave it to me, big boy. I get in with the Grayson Dame on the boat, study her voice and so on, and show her how much we look like. Then I sell her on the idea of fooling the reporters by swapping places with me when the boat docks. She's right, Krogan. The Grayson Dame dislikes publicity, dislikes reporters. She'll be glad for a chance to trick them. Beside that, she's always ready for an adventure that promises a thrill. I got a complete record of Miss Grayson's life and activities. Still, I'll be let her perfect in the part by the time she returns. Very good. And if you succeed, you'll be independently wealthy for life. But if you fail or try to double-cross us, the stage will lose a very charming young actress. Don't worry. I'm not going to let you down. I won't double-cross you. Telegram for Miss Grayson. Telegram for Miss Grayson. Miss Grayson. Telegram for Miss Grayson. <laughs> I'll take care of Grayson. You find out who's on that stretcher. Okay, I'll meet you at the taxi stand. All right. Just a minute, Miss Grayson. I'd like a word about Aluminum Products Company. Aluminum Products? Really? Is that anyone's business except my own? Let me pass, please. Thanks for stopping, Reed. I got a swell shot. Who is the puddle duck? Uh, Miss Moria. Just seasickness. All right, smart guy. We'll take care of her. Snip. It's just her high and mighty way of telling the world who she is. Uh, uh. Mr. Reed's office. Just a minute, please. Mr. North of Aluminum Products on the phone. Right. Hello, Ken. <laughs> Say, you'll have to speak to that new boss of yours. She treated me like a cub reporter on his first assignment. Yeah, she's treated me worse than that. Really? What do you mean? Oh, well, she's going to take control of the company out of the hands of the board. Signing her proxies over to an attorney named uh, Artisan. Did you ever hear of him? I've never met him. I know there is such a man. It's uh, G.K. Artisan, isn't it? That's the man. I hope maybe you had a line on him. I don't have now, but I will have by morning. Uh, thanks, Reed. The control of aluminum products must remain in the hands of the board. I heartily agree with you. Goodbye. Casey. Yes, Mr. Reed. Send uh, Lowry and Axford in, please. I want a line on an attorney by the name of George K. Otterson. Do you know him? He's a big shot corporation lawyer. Plenty of money, country estate. What's he done? That's what I want to know. Find out to who his connections are, if he's ever been mixed up in a shady deal. In other words, I want the whole dope quick. Did you find out anything about Otterson? Only that the guy is too perfect. He don't smoke, he don't drink, he don't go to burly Q shows. He belongs to the church and he takes up the collection. That's the trouble. His halo fits in too tight. <laughs> Even his legal practice is only up and up. There's no clue to any connection between him and that Grayson girl. Well, keep after him. Yes, sir. That's right. What will you do now, Mr. Britton? I've got to see Francis Grayson. 
But if she won't talk to you... She won't talk to Britt Reed, but she'll talk to the Green Hornet. You mean... Yes, Cato. The Green Hornet goes into action again. It's good. It's almost perfect. Only you must write more quickly, with more confidence. Why must I go to that darned old meeting? Why can't Artisan go and take the papers with them already signed? He's a corporation lawyer. He can handle it. Well, they might question the signature, and if they see you sign the documents, there'll be no question. Now try it again, a little faster. Cut the motor. Be ready for a quick getaway. We're taking Miss Grayson with us. Why would you do that? To keep her from attending an important board meeting of aluminum products tomorrow. I understand. That's good enough. Otterson will be here shortly to give you final instructions about the director's meeting. I who that is. Otterson isn't due. It's more of those poor reporters, I guess. But let's get instructions to throw them out. Show me, Miss Grayson. What is this, a hold-up? I have no time to argue. Oh! Oh! There's someone there. Well, let's find out who it is. Oh, who are you? What do you want? Green Hornet. Thanks for the introduction. Now stand over there. I want to talk to Miss Grayson. Miss Grayson, you talk fast. I want to know why you're placing your uncle's millions in Addison's hands. I don't see that that's any of your business. Where there are millions at stake, it's always the business of the Green Hornet. Miss Grayson, you're going with me. Oh, kidnapping, eh? Grab the phone. Call Addison. Call the police. Call him. You killed him! Not so fast, Miss Grayson. Did you write that? No, I... Yes, yes, of course. It's my signature. So you had to practice your own signature, eh? Why did you do it? Well, because I... Don't lie to me. He made me do it. He made you practice the signature of Francis Grayson. And who are you? I'm Stella Moyer. Stella Moyer, the actress. Well, spill the rest of it. So Miss Grayson fell for the trick and agreed to come ashore on a stretcher. There was an ambulance there waiting on the dock. Where is Miss Grayson now? She's out at Artisan's country home, 10 miles out on Morningdale Road. And you still don't know the name of the man who employed you? No, no, I tell you. I was brought to them blindfolded and taken out the same way. I'd tell you if I knew. But they said they'd kill me if I did. And they will. They will! Now, take it easy. Take it easy, Miss Maria. Sit down. I'm going to keep you out of mischief for a while. Are you all right, sir? Yes. Well, you have to tie up these, these men. This one here and the one out in the hall. We'll take that one first. After you've roped them, call the police. Tell them to pick up these people on a charge of conspiracy to defraud the Grayson estate. Arrest Miss Grayson? No, that's not Miss Grayson. That's an actress impersonating her. Miss Grayson is a prisoner at the Addison Country Home. Mr. Otterson. Oh, Stella. What's the meaning of this? The Green Hornet. A hornet? What's he doing in this job? I tried to kill him, but he gassed me. I don't know what happened then. I thought he'd kill Tower and was going to kill me. He found out who I was and forced me to tell him where Francis Grayson is. We've got to get to my place quick. The Hornet means to kidnap Miss Grayson and hold her for ransom. If Francis Grayson gets out of our hands now, we're all due for a spell in the pen. We've got to get the Hornet. You get out of town and stay hidden. Communicate with Tor as soon as it's safe.
Miss Grayson, you're coming with me. With you? Who are you? What are you? Never mind who I am. I've come to take you away from these crooks. How many people are there in the house? I don't know. Two men brought me here in an ambulance. Some guy in there with that doll. Yeah, you're crazy. You're off the beam. I'm telling you, I heard him talking. You sure? Yeah.
an outlaw. But I don't want to see the safety of our country jeopardized. What do you mean? Those men who were holding you were... If they escape, escaped, we'll never find them in this storm. Look, there's a light. They take weapons from that house. I'll investigate. You stay with the car. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, your impersonator would have signed away your rights to Aluminum Products Company and possibly endangered the country. Whoever you are, I owe you my life. All right, Hornets. You've interfered for the last time. Are you all right? How did you get here? I followed in your car. I found it at the house from which you took the girl. Good work. You saved my life. Who are you? Your life was in no danger. Those men were using you to gain control of the aluminum products company. So that's why they were holding me. Yes, and you played right into their hands when you allowed another girl to impersonate you. I see that now. But tell me, what should I do now? Your company produces aluminum, a most essential metal. You must allow the control of the company to remain in the present board of directors. They are responsible, patriotic men interested in the welfare of our country. Why, well, I, I never even thought of changing control. Good. Don't let anyone persuade you to do so. You can depend on that. Not after what I've gone through. Another thing. Don't tell the press anything that has happened since you returned from Europe. I certainly shan't. And forget you ever met me. And now, Miss Grayson, we will take you home. I'm glad you escaped, but we'll miss Otterson. It doesn't mention the Green Hornet or the Grayson girl. I'd like to know what happened to them. Yes? Put him on. Yes, Oliver, what is it? Oh, she is, eh? All right, you get back here as soon as you can. Salter reports that the Grayson girl is back in her own home. Take her there, of course, but the Green Hornet who wants a cut in the millions. It's uncanny the way he senses our plans and disrupts them. He's outspotted us at every turn. And there's no excuse for it. We have unlimited resources, a hired army of fighters, and yet single-handed, the Green Hornet is too much for us. He sure messed up our aluminum products deal. Not altogether. I'm working on another angle to get control of that company. What is it? Striking at them through Home Electric company from which they buy their power. I get it. Without light and power, they're licked. Send Franks in. Franks has been making an undercover investigation of Home Electric for me. Hello, Tower. Hi. What have you accomplished? Well, for one thing, I found that the franchise Home Electric has been operating under for years has a trick clause in it. What is it? If Home Electric fails to serve power for a period of 24 hours, the franchise is null and void. 24 hours. It shouldn't be difficult to put them out of business for that long. Then our triple state electric company can take over the franchise. Right. And after that happens, the service we furnish aluminum products won't do them any good. What else did you find out? Found a guard at the plant by the name of DeLuca. I know his record and I got plenty on him. He'll do anything we want, and quite reasonably. Contact DeLuca at once. Locate a reliable man who understands electricity and can handle explosives. We'll close out Home Electric immediately. I'm telling you, Reed, this trouble they're having at the Home Electric plant is the work of foreign agents. I think you're right, Michael. We've already published rumors to that effect. What more can we do? People wake up and realize what's going on all around them. It'll take more than rumors to wake up people, won't it, Case? It certainly will. To most people, sabotage is just something they read about in the paper. And do nothing about it until it lands with a wallop. Michael, dig up the facts in the Home Electric case and we'll print them. Sure, and I've been after trying to dig them up. But this President Marsden of Home Electric is just a big puddin'. Says I to him, put one good Irish cop like myself in your plant and he'll round up them foreign agents in no time. Did he offer you the job? He did not. He ordered me out of his office. <laughs> Yes, I know. He called me about it. He's on his way over here now. Boss, I got the lowdown on that blackout the home electric plant last night. All right, let's have it. Three emergency switches were pulled, and the overload burned out a thousand feet of cable into a whole flock of pole transformers. I thought those switches were kept locked. They are, but somebody filed the lock. Did the home electric people make any statement? No, not even after I told them that the stockholders were complaining to our paper. I'm here to see Mr. Reed. What name, please? Mr. Marsden. Yes, Case? Mr. Marsden is here. Send him in. Okay, boys.
Hi, Axford. How do you do? I'll show you in. Thank you. Won't you sit down? Thank you. What do you think you're doing, Larry? Oh, I just want to hear what Marsden had to say about man of action here. Well, it won't be good. I'll see here. Mr. Marsden, I judge by our phone conversation that you think the trouble you've been having is sabotage caused by foreign agents. I certainly do. We're supplying power to many important industries. Yes, I know. One very important industry, the Aluminum Products Company. Uh, why do you especially mention that company? Well, in these days, aluminum is a very important product. You're right. Have there been any former attempts at sabotage at your plant? Yes, several, but uh, none have done any damage until recently. Have you considered the vulnerability of your big dam up the river? Why, that's a massive structure and couldn't be damaged except by an enormous amount of explosives. But if the water gates were closed and the motor which controlled them disabled, then the plant would have to close. So that's the weak spot. I beg your pardon? I was just thinking aloud, thinking of what a prolonged blackout would mean to the essential industries you're serving with power. I'd like to have a look around your plant up at the dam, if I may. I had be glad to have you. Then you can satisfy those stockholders who've been complaining to you. You won't print anything about that water gate control. Oh, that's off the record. Good. I'll write you out a pass. Will you make it for two, please? I'd like to take one of my reporters with me. All right. You know anything about this country, Lowry? Yeah, I've been over it lots of times. You know, work for the subtle, see the world. Deserted, isn't it? Yeah, anything could happen around here without attracting attention. Rick Reed and one of his reporters. Get after him. <laughs> Hey, Lowry, the car that we just passed a little while ago is turned around and is following us. Yeah, so it is. You got a gun? No, have you? Oh, respectable people don't carry guns. Yeah, well, right now I'd rather be less respectable and have a faster car. This thing go any faster than this? I hope so. To get in the way, I'll try for the tires. Evidently, those people back there are not so respectable. Hang on. Wise guy that Reed dust us out. What do we do? Keep after him. I can't see a thing. Stay on the road, can't you? Yeah. Step on it. They're right around that curve. Might as well turn around. Are you Milton, the chief guard? Yes, Mr. Reed. What can I do for you? I'm interested in seeing the place from which the water gates are controlled. Take these gentlemen to the gate control house. I'll phone Jenkins to show them around. This way? Jennings, I'd like to know about the water gate control. This is the motor that opens and shuts the gate. Huh? And this is the control switch. I see. Well, now, if the gate were closed and the motor disabled, could the gate be opened again? Not unless the motor was repaired or a new one installed. What's this big board for? It's an extra board for emergency use. It carries a full load like the one in the powerhouse below. Do you think there are enough men around here to guard the place properly? Sure. All good boys. Besides, we've got an alarm to the police station up the river. I see. Well, thanks a lot, Jennings. You're welcome, Mr. Reed. Come on, Lowry. Get your fingers out of the electricity. See what you wanted to? Yes, thank you. Have you hired any more guards lately since you've been having trouble? No need to. My men are all good guards. Besides, I have more at the upper gate. Oh, boys, take Mr. Reed to the central. Hello. Glad to meet you, Mr. Reed. 
Well, your face looks familiar. A lot of people tell me that. I guess it's because I got such a funny pan. His name's DeLuca. DeLuca. No, I don't remember the name. Well, Milton, you've got things under control here. I'll tell your boss. Thanks, Mr. Reed. Much obliged to you. You know, Larry, I think I've seen that guard DeLuca somewhere before. And under circumstances not to his credit. Why don't you tell the chief guard? Well, I'm not sure. I don't want to cause an innocent man to lose his job. Have Triple State ready to apply for that franchise, Lynch. We're putting Home Electric out of business. That's right. Yes? It's Tower Chief with the man I told you about. Come in. Here's the reliable man you wanted who knows how to handle explosives. You vouch for him? I sure do. Show the Chief your credentials. Fourteen. That's right. I wasn't burned up in that ship fire as everybody thought. I wouldn't have known you. That's why I figured he'd come in handy. The Green Hornet won't know him either. All I ask is another crack at that guy. You had your chance on that boat. He jumped me, but I had him halfway over the deck rail. What happened? The last I remember was his gas gun. Then I came to in a hospital on the waterfront. He got in touch with me last night. Your recovery is very timely. Get set for tonight. With that guard De Luca has fixed to let us in, we can't miss. It's lucky Axford's out tonight. Otherwise, he'd be curious to know why I'm going through his rose gallery. Yes, sir. Mr. Axford is very fond of asking questions. Not so fond of some of the answers he gets. Hmm. My hunch was right. DeLuca does have a criminal record. A string of aliases as long as your arm. Look at this. Larceny, grand and petty. Arson. Hmm. Here it is. He was mixed up in that tunnel job last year. He didn't recognize you, Mr. Britt? No, when we met in the tunnel, I was the Green Hornet. Take that back to Axford's room and get ready to travel. Travel? Yes, we've got to get that information to Milton, the chief guard, at once. And Mr. DeLuca is going to have a visit from the Green Hornet. <laughs> the lights. We'll have to trust the luck to stay on the road. They're shooting. Do you think we are too late? Probably to warn the chief guard, but not too late to deal with the Luger. Right off, boys. Ryan's turning in the alarm. The alarm wire's been cut. A big hunk taken out. It can't be spliced. Here's your chance, Martin. Keep him busy on this side. DeLuca will let me in through the other gate, then I'll take care of the control house. If I'm not back in five minutes, check on me. Right. Their main attack seems to be the powerhouse. And I'm sure their chief objective is the gate control. What can we do? You can get to the telephone and call the nearest police. But you... I hope to have my job finished by the time the police arrive. job is to close the water gate, then fix the motor so the gate can't be opened again. Right. This is the motor. Here's the switch that controls it. All right, good. All right, start the motor and close the gate. Hold it. The green hornet. So you're up to your old tricks, eh, DeLuca? But this time you're not going to get away with it.
Wadeen ought to be back. You better send Joe to check on him. What are you going to do? What you came here to do. What do you mean? Destroy that motor and cut the city off from power and light. See where that fuse goes? I put your explosives in there. we got to get out of here. We'll be blown to bits. Who sent you here? Whose idea was it? Step on that fuse. Put it out. I will when you tell me what I want to know. Put out that fuse and I'll tell you. You'll tell me first. The Green Hornet! He's got me! <laughs> piece of timber will break the door down. Now look at it! Your friends can't help you now. Tell me who your boss is. I don't know. I was hired by a man I never saw before. Stop lying! In there. We gotta get out of here. We'll be blown to bits. Who sent you here? Whose idea was it? Step on that shoes. Put it out. I will when you tell me what I want to know. Luca! Marty! Your friends can't help you now. Tell me who your boss is. I don't know. I was hired by a man I never saw before. Stop lying! Spread that piece of timber will break the door down. Hurry up! Break down that door! Thank <laughs> you. 
smart trick. Oh, it sure pulled a fast one on us. You know, we never connected that fuse of the dynamite after all. Yeah? Where is the hornet? She's over there. Dead. Electrocuted. Don't shoot, hornet. You're going out of that door ahead of me. If you stop or turn, you'll get it. Go on. Police! Keep moving. one of the guards in the control room fought the Green Hornet. DeLuca was knocked out in the struggle, but managed to delay the attackers until they were driven off by the arrival of the police. The Green Hornet again. Sure, if I could only lay my hands on the spout. Lucky for you, you can't, man of action. Besides, I don't think the Hornet had anything to do with it. Oh, you don't, eh? No. Remember, I wrote that story. So what? So I checked the facts, see? And there were half a dozen guards and several cops that saw the Hornet. Now, listen, Lowry, why would the Green Hornet want to sabotage home electric? Well, one reason might be is that they supply power to the Grayson Aluminum Works and several other places that are very important at the present time to the government. Well, I still don't believe it. The Green Hornet may be a bandit and a racketeer, but he's not a traitor. Yes. I'll send him right in. Mr. Reed wants you. Hmm. Why, I don't know. <laughs> Did you talk with DeLuca? No, by the time I got to his room and house, he'd taken a powder. Didn't you think it was odd that DeLuca disappeared? He's the man of the hour, the fellow who fought the Green Hornet and spoiled all his plans. Sure, that's just the reason why he scrammed. He knows the Hornet isn't going to forget that. Maybe you're right. Anyway, let's water over the dam. Look, I've just had a telegram from the Border Patrol. They say they're having trouble with aliens slipping over the line. I want you to take Axford and get me a feature story for the Sunday edition. Sure, I know. I should have finished the Hornet when he was down, but I thought that electric chili got it, polished him off, and I... We'll take care of the Hornet and get control of the home electric before we're through. In the meantime, you'll have to keep out of sight. When does the next shipment of rifles go down to the border? Tomorrow. Good. Put DeLuca on one of the trucks and get him over the line. Wait. Take Bourdine with you at the warehouse and show him how we operate this job. Hey, slow down, Axford. There's no hurry in getting back to the office with this Border Patrol story. It's for the Sunday edition, and I want to live to read it. I want to show you what the old crate will do. Crate is right. Egg crate. <laughs> You're getting chicken, are you? <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. No, I tell you, I had a supercharger put in, and the next time I see the car of the Green Hornet, I'd chase it up a tree. Yeah, you do your tree climbing on your own time. <laughs> He's on the wrong side! Hey, what's the idea in crowding us off the road? Keep your mouth shut if you want to stay out of jail. Hey, were you driving that crate, Halfwit? Control your tongue, me bucko, or I'll make you look worse than he does. If you'd been on your own side of the road, this would never have happened. Look at those wheel marks there if you want to see who was at fault. If the man's hurt, I'd take him to a doctor. Hey, Lowry! We better run this mug to the hospital. What's holding you up? Accident. What's going on here? Go on, clear out of this nosy before I bust you. You and how many more of your mob? What have you got in them bales? None of your business. Why? Hold it, Mike. Hold it. One of your men is hurt. We were going to take him to a doctor. You're going to get moving in about one minute, or you'll need more than a doctor. Oh, hold, it. Hold, it. hold it, Mike. Hold it. Okay, tough guy. But if the guy croaks, don't blame us. 
Come on, my friend. Oh, let me poke him. Come on. I can knock the three of them. Suffering snakes, why didn't you let me bash them? Didn't you see that gun in his pocket? Another minute, you'd been shot full of holes. Come on, let's go. Ah, phooey. Did either one of them get a look at the other side of this bale? Look here. No, they didn't see it. And no thanks to you, I got here just in time. What happened? They sideswiped us. DeLuca fell out when the truck hit the bank. Take it easy, Axford. Take it easy. You know, the fellow that got hurt looked familiar to me, but I, I can't place him. I didn't get a look at him. Hey, pull it over there and stop. I want to take another look at those guys. I'll take him back into town. Spike can go on with you. Put him in the car. Now get your load back on the truck and beat it. Willem's going back to town with the guy that's hurt. Let's follow him. murdering smugglers into their lair, this would-be reporter wouldn't let me go in and blag them out by the scruff of their necks. I tell you, Reed, Lowry's gone soft on us. What makes you think they were smugglers? Well, they were mighty anxious to keep us from finding out what they were carrying. Where's the house where they went? Away out at the end of Fleming Street. Here's the address. Let me phone the cops and raid the dump. Now, so wait a minute. Lowry's right. You don't have any evidence against the men. You can't swear out a warrant just because you think they're crooks. But... Check on the place in the morning. Find out who the owner is and who the tenant is. That's all for now. But you... All right. Have you no bringing up your home? Will you need me any more tonight, Mr. Britt? No, Cato. There doesn't seem to be anything more the Hornet can do about the home electric power plant raid. No, sir. Not unless you can locate the missing guard, Diruka. Reed! Reed! Yes? Now, oh, by golly, maybe you'll believe me. Here's a picture of one of them smugglers in me private rogues gallery. That's the fellow that was thrown on his head when we crashed the truck. And will you note that one of his aliases is DeLuca, the name of the guard that disappeared from the home electric power plant. Well, why didn't Lowry recognize DeLuca? He saw the man at the home electric plant. Yes, but he didn't see him at the truck accident. The mug was down on his face and Lowry was busy arguing. Maybe you've got something there, Michael. Take this down to Commissioner Brunson the first thing in the morning and tell him your story. He might make you a detective. <laughs> well, sure, he might do worse for the force. Good night, sir. Good night. Is that the man, Mr. Britt? Yes, that's DeLuca, all right. The Green Hornet has to talk to him before the police get to him. Get my mask and gun, Cato. Nothing, nothing. Only they should have brought me back to town with all those reporters looking for me. <laughs> That's right, because you're the hero of the home electric raid. Brave guard defends property. Lay off the ribbon, will you? <laughs> Gotta get out of here, I tell you. Ah, quit your beef, and there'll be more truckload of guns going over the border. Yeah, that's the trouble. The chief has enough rifles down there now to equip a whole regiment. Yeah, and he'll be wanting all we can ship to him, too. The Green Hornet! We meet again, don't we, Deluca? 
What do you want? I want information. So you're running guns over the border, eh? Who's getting them? I don't know. They never tell us guys anything. Who doesn't tell you? Who gives you your orders? Guy calls himself Tower. I don't know what his real name is. Where do you get the guns? Look here, Hornet. What are you looking for, a split? The Hornet doesn't take a split. He takes over. Now talk fast. All right. But you've got to give us guys a chance to get clear. A gang would kill us. I'm waiting. The rifles are out in a warehouse, 20 miles out on the Winslow Road. The Winslow Road. You fellows are going to take me out to that warehouse. Well, you can't go out there. The place is heavily guarded. They'd kill all of us. That's a chance we have to take. Here, five his hands behind his back. Make it tight. Now, get the other cord. place you can phone the police. Tell them to pick up a man I left in that cottage. McCroy, what's wrong? Where's DeLuca? The Green Hornet. He's got DeLuca. They've gone to the warehouse. We've got to tell Krogan. Come on. Please. This way. We should have that stuff out of the warehouse by the end of the week. Yeah, Tonjas are flying another load of explosives across the border tonight. Yes? What's that? Yes, the Green Hornet. He's on his way to the warehouse now with Deluca, a prisoner. Yeah, we had a narrow escape. Got out of McCoy's house just before the police arrived. All right, I'll take care of it. Trouble? Plenty. The Hornet's got to Lucan's on his way to the warehouse. Some way the police are in on it. Well, the Hornet wouldn't work with the police. Not directly. But if he could wreck the Syndicate's plans with a tip, he'd certainly give it. Tonji's must be in the air by now. He left the warehouse 20 minutes ago. He'll have to turn back. The warehouse must be destroyed before the Hornet or the police arrive. Get him on the radio. Calling CR4. Calling CR4. Hello? Krogan speaking. CR4. We're going to destroy the warehouse. Set the beacon light and get the men out of there. Calling CR4. Yes, at once. Calling I'm CR4. calling Tanji's back. Calling CR4. Calling CR4. CR4 answering. Go ahead. Tanji's, Krogan speaking. We're going to destroy the warehouse. Turn back and drop a bomb on it. The beacon light will be set and the men clear in 10 minutes. OK, Chief. guide the flyers so they can make a landing. I tell you, we can't go in that warehouse. They'll shoot you down. You're going ahead of me. They'll know you. Well, they'll shoot a dozen like me down in order they could kill the Green Hornet. Get going. What about the guards? Where are they? I don't know. There's something wrong. They must be watching us. Let's get away from here while we can. Hold it, Deluca. That trick won't work. Get inside. Do all these kids? 
cases contain explosives? Yeah, there's tons of us. Grenades and shells. Where does that door lead to? Well, that leads to the basement. There's nothing down there. There's one of our planes making a landing now. You better get out of here while you can. Shells. Where does that door lead to? Well, that leads to the basement. There's nothing down there. There's one of our planes making a landing now. You better get out of here while you can. north of here. Let's travel.
Good morning, Reed. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. Good morning. Say, uh, come in the office, all of you. I want to talk to you. Did you read my story about the bomb warehouse, boss? Who gave you authority to say that place was bombed from the air? Well, I checked with a man who lives about two miles from the place. He claims he saw an airplane surfing around there just before the explosion. Well, if that's true, it's a pretty serious situation. Oh, by the way, uh, where did you get the information that the Green Hornet was there? Oh, just a wild theory of the police. Oh, sure, Lauer is wrong about that. The police told me that when they got there right after the explosion, they heard the Hornet's car pulling away. Here we go again. Axford and the Green Hornet. And why should I not suspect him? Sure, he's mixed up with every devilish thing that happens in the city. Well, I haven't changed my opinion of the Hornet. I still think that he's a public-spirited citizen, risking his life to help make this city a better place to live in. Oh, okay, Casey, so sure, you yeah, try me patience. If he is, why doesn't he come in and identify himself and work with the police? And get himself arrested. Well, they'll catch up with him someday. And discover that he's a modern Robin Hood. Or a clever racketeer. Sure, and I'm believing that's just what he is. All right, Michael. Right now, I have a job for you. Oh, that's fine. And Lowry. What is it? We've got to find out what that warehouse was used for. I want you fellas to go out there and search the wreckage of the place thoroughly. Well, leave it to us. We won't pass up a thing. In the meantime, I'll try to find out who owned and operated it. Yes, sir. You know, Case, that explosion may be part of a widespread plot. It's up to us to find out. Yes, sir. What's the matter with you and your men, Tower? Between the Green Hornet, Britt Reed, and his newspapers, they're making monkeys out of all of you. Listen, Chief, I'll admit the Green Hornet has outsmarted us at every turn. He certainly has. And we still don't know how much he's found out about the warehouse. I sent Dolan and DeLuca over there to destroy any evidence that they could find in the wreckage that would give the police a clue. They should have been back long ago. What held you up? Oh, we had a run-in with a couple of Britt Reed's reporters. They got away with some broken rifles and were trying to get away with this box. They found the ruins. Well, why didn't you get away with them? Well, we would have if the police hadn't interfered. It's a good thing they didn't get away with this box. What's in it? Invoices from the Grimbolt Steel Plant. You don't think those reporters found anything from those broken rifles, do you? Certainly not. Why do you suppose I had this stuff made without serial numbers or manufacturers' names? It'd be tough to have an investigation of the Grimbolt Plant now. If they did, it would cripple the greatest racket that was ever thought of. That is, if Weaver's invention is a success. You're right. Every nation in the world will be bidding for it, including this one. They won't have a chance to bid for it. I've already closed a deal at my own terms. You don't mean to say that you're not going to give this country a chance to get in on it. Why do you think I've been guarding Weaver's invention with such secrecy? I understand. When's you going to be ready for a test? Some night this week. Yes? This is Manning at the Grimbold. Go ahead, Manning. Listen, Krogan, we just had another accident. An electrician named Carter killed. I'm telling you again, this stuff of Weaver's is too dangerous to handle. I know it's dangerous, but we've got to proceed. Report Carter's death in the usual way and send some flowers to the funeral. Boy, they're sure knocking them over in that lab. Two chemists and three electricians. It's got me worried. I don't want anybody to start asking embarrassing questions. There aren't any clues here. One minute, please. This might lead to something. Where did you find it? Among the warehouse wreckage. What is it? Well, it's a, a shipping tag from, from the Grimbold Steel Plant. That's the place where they've been having so many fatal accidents lately. You dig up all the information you can about the place. Yes, sir. There's a Mrs. Carter outside, and she insists on seeing you. Well, have her come right in. Now, go ahead and let me know as soon as you get that information on the Grimbold Steel Plant. Yes, sir. Come on, kid. I'd give you another lesson. Yes, sir. Well, you... <laughs> Mrs. Carter. How do you do? How do you do? Won't you be seated? Thank you. What can I do for you? Mr. Reed, you and your paper have helped bring to light so many terrible conditions in town. Well, I thought there was something you ought to know. Well, concerning what, Mrs. Carter? It's, uh... It's about the Grimball steel mills. Grim? Oh, do you know anything about it? Only that they've had several fatal accidents there recently. Yes. My husband was just killed there. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Carter. I didn't want him to take the job because he wasn't a steel worker. But they offered him such high wages he couldn't refuse. You say he wasn't a steel worker? No. He was an electrician. They were using him in in some kind of a laboratory on experiments. 
The electrical laboratory. You may depend upon it that I'll do all I can to help. Thank you, Mr. Thank you for coming, Mrs. Carter. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Reed. Did you get the information? Yes, sir. The Grimbold plant shut out for six months due to financial troubles. A man named Eldridge took it over for some syndicate. For the past few months, they've been operating at full blast. Uh, war orders? Looks that way. Michael, check with all the leading engineering and construction firms. Find out what they know about Grimbold. I'll do that right away. They'll probably tell us all we want to know. Uh, nothing. Anything for me, boss? Yes, Lowry. You and I are going to drive out to the Grimbold plant. I'm with you, boss. Well, I'm thinking I ought to go with you, boss. We won't need you, pipsqueak. This is a man's job. Now, see here. I... Oh, I'm gonna knock you loose, one of the... I... I'd like to see Mr. Eldridge. Will you tell him that it's Britt Reed, uh, the Sentinel, and Mr. Lowry, one of his reporters? I've said for Manning, you can tell him yourself. How are you, Manning? Hey, Manning, there's been too many beefs about the accidents around here. You gotta clamp down. Yeah? Who? Hold him there till I call you back. Britt Reed and a reporter outside, they want to see me. What a break for me. Tell them to come in. I'm gonna call Krogan first and get his advice. The Zellridge. Britt Reed and a reporter are here. Yeah, they want to see me. Come to investigate the accidents we've been having, I suppose. Well, this is a chance we've been looking for. We've got to let them in, but as to Reed's getting out, well, that's up to you. I understand. Well, Tower's here. He can handle it. All kinds of accidents can happen around a steel plant. Tower, here's your chance. And will I use it? You let Dolan handle the ladle crane. He knows how to operate it. Tower can give him the signals from the catwalk. I got you, boss. I'll show Mr. Reed the operation of the open hearth. That's it. Now place your men and come back to my office. Weaver talking. Listen, Weaver. Stop all work in your lab for the next half hour. Turn out all your lights. All right, Mr. Eldridge. Now let Mr. Reed and the reporter come in. All right, Dolan. Get up in that crane cab. Send the man that's running it to my office. Don't forget to watch for my signal. We can't afford to miss this time. Come in, gentlemen. Mr. Reed, I'm glad for this opportunity to congratulate you on the splendid work your paper's been doing. Thanks. This is Mr. Lowry. How are you? How do you do? Won't you sit down, gentlemen? Come in. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Eldridge. Quite all right. Come in, come in. I want you to meet Mr. Reed and Mr. Lowry of the Sentinel. How do you do? Mr. Manning, our superintendent. How do you do? I presume, Mr. Reed, the object of your visit is to look over the plant. Yes. What particular product does your plant turn out? Oh, steel rods, structural steel, aeroplane engine blocks, etc. Are you manufacturing any arms or munitions? Oh, not yet. But we're preparing to. I'm leaving for Europe tomorrow to meet my partners who are over there now, drumming up business. You have a laboratory in connection with your mill, haven't you? Yes, but it's closed just now. You closed it because of the many fatal accidents you've been having? Not exactly. Most of our accidents occur in the steel mills. You know, it's a very hazardous work. Yes, I presume so. I think it would be a very good idea if I were to show these gentlemen the kind of work we are doing in the open hearth. Quite right. How about it, Mr. Reed? I think that would be interesting. All right, gentlemen. Those cars you see there are rolling into the charging buggy. Now, what's the matter with that fellow? He's got hot milk cramps. Due to drinking too much water around these furnaces. He'll come out all right.
Beetle Craig. They're charging an open heart. Thank goodness you're okay, boss. You all right? Yeah. Sorry, Reed. I wouldn't have had this happen for the world. Sometimes these ladles slip. Our men are always on the lookout. They have good reason to be. I don't think I'm in shape to do any more sightseeing today. I can understand how you feel. Another day, perhaps we can take it up where we left off. Thanks. Falling. Wait here, Reed. Hold that corner. Another poor guy to be buried in a mold of steel. How does a thing like that happen? Hot milk cramps. Do many men lose their lives that way? Only a few new hands. Most of the accident happen now in the lab. The lab? Where is the lab? Back of the building. Come on, Laurie, let's take a look. It's all locked up. The head chemist we were stopped working about a half an hour ago. Does anyone work around here at night? Only the watchman and a few workers standing the furnaces. Thanks. Hey, there's Eldridge. Looks like he and Manning are having a squabble. I think I've seen about enough for today. <laughs> Me too. What do you think of the place, boss? They ought to do something about safeguarding the men who work there. Yeah, and the people who visit there, too, judging from the accident that almost got us. That was no accident. Say, you don't think that was an attempt on your life, do you? I'm afraid it was. That fellow deliberately jumped by me to knock you in the clear. Maybe you're right. But people do a lot of funny things when they get excited. Yeah. Manning wasn't excited. Say, you know, I was... Tonight, Cato. The Green Hornet's going to find out what they're making in that carefully guarded lab at the Grimbold Steel Plant. A laboratory in a steel mill shouldn't be chemoelectrical. Oh, your gas gun, Mr. Britt. Cato. Looks good, Mr. Brett. I'll go ahead. You follow at a distance. I heard something. Thought it might be backfired from one of our trucks coming in. Have Bill check up in the yard.
Did you see Pete? No, I think he was punching his round. Pete, what happened? The, the, what happened? Get some water, quick. Stand up with your hands in the clear. What do you want? Who are you? The Green Hornet. Yes. Now answer my questions if you value your life. Are you in charge of this lab? Yes. Yes, I'm the... I'm the chief chemist here. Why are there so many fatal accidents here? Speak up. We're working with very dangerous chemicals. What are you making? I... I cannot tell you. I'm sworn to secrecy. You are going to tell me. What are you making? An anti-aircraft bomb. Why should that work be so dangerous? Don't lie to me. Give me the details. I, I can't tell you. It's a government secret. What government? Answer me. I, I, I can't tell you. They kill me. if you value your life. Are you in charge of this lab? Yes. Yes, I'm the... I'm the chief chemist here. Why are there so many fatal accidents here? Speak up. We're working with very dangerous chemicals. What are you making? I... I cannot tell you. I'm sworn to secrecy. But you are going to tell me. What are you making? An anti-aircraft bomb. 
Why should that work be so dangerous? Don't lie to me. Give me the details. I, I can't tell you. It's a government secret. What government? Answer me. I, I, I can't tell you. They killed me. <laughs> the main switch and cut off the current. We can't get him out of here now. Is he dead? No. Just badly shocked. Where was that explosion? You got me. Unless it came from the lab. That's it, the lab. You call the others. The guard. We'd better go. Just a minute. Weaver may be carrying something interesting. explains his invention, doesn't it? Yes, Mr. Britt. The inventor itemized every detail of his anti-aircraft bomb. Supplied with these, our anti-aircraft defenses would be impregnable. Yes, and in the enemy's hands, our attack would be highly ineffective, wouldn't it? Absolutely ineffective, sir. The bomb works on the scientific principle of magnetic attraction. That means particles, highly magnetized, will automatically move with great speed toward metal. Well, in other words, uh, once the bomb explodes, the fragments would tend to find their own targets, which in this case would be the motors of the attacking planes. Is that right? That is correct. And according to this, every airplane within a thousand feet of the explosion will be hit. That's very ingenious. Say, do you know anything about this Dr. Bedlow, whose name is in the book? Yes. He's an inventor and a very well-rated scientist. Could he have been the man in the laboratory? Absolutely not, sir. I know the doctor by sight and by reputation. Still, he might be mixed up in this anti-aircraft bomb business. I do not think so. He's a scientist, living entirely in a world of abstract thoughts. Suppose you go to his place for some advice on one of your own inventions. I'll be very glad to do so. I'll go this evening. Good. You might find out something important about the identity of the inventor of the anti-aircraft bomb. Think hard, Weaver. Was there anything else in that notebook the Hornet took from you beside the layout of that bomb? And you better come clean with us. I've told you repeatedly there was nothing in that notebook except the electrical and chemical formula. No names? Yeah, or uh, telephone numbers. None except Dr. J.C. Bedlow's. Bedlow's? Who's he? Does he know anything about this bomb? He knows all about it. I've been consulting with him privately all the way through. Holy cats! Wait a minute. Wait till Manny hears of this. Sit down, Weaver. We're not through with you yet. See, Weaver has a partner that's been working with him on that anti-aircraft bomb. A partner? Then he must know all about the bomb. Who is he? A Dr. Bedlow. His name is in that notebook the Hornet took from Weaver. We've got to get hold of him right away and stop him from talking. I'll make that Weaver tell me where Bedlow lives. Get Bedlow. Take him out to Foley's old house on the Fulton Road. Here's the key. Better take Dolan with you. I'll have someone else watch Weaver. That's a good word. We got the anti-aircraft gun. Good. And the right type for the anti-aircraft bomb. It's out where we're going to make our test? No, it's still at the factory. But you said you had it. Now, look, this thing is risky. It takes a lot of figuring out. I know all about that. What about our undercover man, Evans, at the factory? He's done his job, all right. Which was to let me know when the right type of guns were coming through and being delivered. He sent me word today. And now it's up to us to pick one off. Is that it? That's right. They're being delivered to the armory late this afternoon. The gun we want will be on a covered truck heading out along the Red River Highway. The bombs are all ready, which means we can make our test tonight. I'll phone Manning to hijack that gun.
Manning talking. Yes, boss. They're right here. What's up? Something important? Mm-hmm. Yes? The Red River Highway. All right, I'll send the boys right out so they can find a suitable place to operate. Well, it's up to you two now. What is? The gun we've been waiting for is leaving the factory at 4 o'clock in a covered truck. Good. Where do we pick it up? I'll show you. Hey, now, slow down. If them things are what they look like from here... That's just what they are. This man's dead. This fellow's alive. Hey, hi, Jack. This... They got away with the anti-aircraft gun. Anti-aircraft gun? Who did? Tell us, man. We gotta get this man to the hospital. Listen, as fast as we can make it. What about the other one? We take him to the morgue and notify the police. Why, can you imagine running into a story like this? <laughs> See Dr. Bedlow? Yes. As I was driving toward his home, I saw Dr. Bedlow struggling with two men who were dragging him from his house. They threw him into a car and drove away. Did you follow them? Yes. They took him to that house on Fulton Road, the place where we had the trouble with that Mr. Foley. Foley's house. And Dr. Bedlow is in the hands of the racketeers. I am sure he is. Let's get the Hornet out, but we're going to call on Dr. Bedlow. Pretty smart inventing that anti-aircraft bomb. I wouldn't have had a thing to do with it if I thought for a minute it was going to fall in the hands of criminals. Wait a minute, Bedlow. Who's a criminal? You are. Keep your hands up. The Green Hornet. That's right. I am the Green Hornet. What do you want? I wouldn't do that if I were you, Doctor. I came here to help you. No, the Green Hornet never helped anybody. You're a master criminal. You are the innocent victim of a dangerous plot that may involve our country. Shall I tie these men up, sir? Yes. What is the meaning of this? What do you want with me? I want the truth from you, Doctor. Well, if it's about the bomb... I know all about the bomb and your association with Weaver and the Grimbold Steel Plant. What I want to find out is, for whom are the Grimbold people making these bombs? I don't know. I don't know a thing about it. Tell the truth, Doctor. If you don't, it may cost the lives of many people. I've told you the truth. I don't know. Nobody does, except Manning and the people he's working for. They're expecting a telephone call from Manning now, any moment. I didn't know what Weaver and I were letting ourselves in I for. I heard that when I came in. Keep an eye on the doctor. Hello. To Luca? Yeah. Now get this straight. I'm leaving the mill right away to deliver the bomb. Yeah. Tonjes will fly his plane to the field on Fulton Road, just south of Claremont, where he'll transfer to our other plane. Did you get that? Yeah. Leave Dolan to guard Bedlow. Then you'll get over to that field and watch Tonjes' plane. He'll be leaving there within 20 minutes, so make it snappy. Okay. We're leaving you here, Doctor. You'd better call the police to get these men and take you home safely. Come on.
it too late? Not yet. I'll follow that fellow with this other plane. All right. to know his business. He ought to. He's a deserter from the artillery. That's time just now. Don't forget, give them plenty of time to bail out and get in the clear. I know. Don't fire right at the plane. We want that shell to explode about 500 yards above and behind it. I'll take care of that. Tonja's plane crashes. Go ahead and shoot.
that. Give him plenty of time to bail out and get in the clear. I know. Don't fire right at the plane. We want that shell to explode about 500 yards above and behind it. He's in the clear. There's another plane up there. Yeah, but he's got no business being there. Fire that gun before Tonja's plane crashes. The bomb got that other plane. You stay here and guard that bomb. Identify the guy that flew that crate. That plane was a thousand feet from the bomb when it exploded. Every inch of it. Old Weaver's bomb was a greater success than we expected. No wonder Old Weaver was sore when the chief insisted that he take an extra bomb along in case the first one didn't work. Yeah. Hey, uh, we'll have to get that extra bomb. It must be over there where those frayers are burning. The bomb must be there with that gun. And only one man guarding it. Grab that bomb. Smash the ignition on that truck so they can't get away with the gun. Jitters to think the chief has already sold the bomb to a foreign country. But he'd have it tried out on me. Good. Green Horn. They've got the bomb. That Hornet's car is bulletproof. This will sure put us in a bad spot with the chief. You ain't fooling. Where are we going? Home, where you're going to carefully analyze this bomb. It should prove most interesting. And after that, it will mysteriously find its way into the hands of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. They will be much surprised to receive it. They'll be more surprised when they read the note explaining its destructive force and the fact that it's being manufactured at the Grimbold Steel Company for a foreign government. Men who are so disroyal to their own country deserve harsh treatment. Don't worry. They'll get it. The Green Hornet has cost us a million dollars getting away with that bomb. I can't see how. We can make more bombs, can't we? How can we? Weaver never gave us the secret formula for the magnetic force that makes it so effective. Can't we put the pressure on him and his partner, Bedlow? If we can find them. Frank's just reported that Bedlow and Weaver have both disappeared. Not bad if I do say it myself. Miss Frances Grayson, aluminum products heiress, who recently returned from Europe to take over her inheritance, is so impressed with the product they are manufacturing that she is having built with great secrecy a special aluminum sport plane for her personal use. At a cost of three hundred thousand dollars. Holy crow! Miss Grayson stated. So how'd you get this story, Lowry? I thought Miss Grayson didn't talk to reporters. Oh, I have a way with me, Casey. 
Sure, if you ask me. Nobody's asking you. Nevertheless, I'm telling you, I'll bet you got the story from the Grayson Cook. <laughs> Good morning, all. Good morning, Chief. Good morning. They come into the office, all of you. Lowry, I read your Grayson airplane story. That's pretty swell work getting a story on that, Jane, eh, boss? That was pretty good reporting, but Mr. North, the head of aluminum products, Miss Grayson's company, is a little worried about it. Why is that? Well, you see, Miss Grayson just returned from Europe. She doesn't know the town's full of racketeers. When they find out that she can spend that much money on what's practically a toy, they're going to consider her a pretty good, pretty good prospect. I hadn't thought of that. And what did you think of my story of him hijacking that anti-aircraft gun? Well, Michael, you covered that very well. <laughs> Anything special from me this morning, boss? Yes, Lowry. I've heard a rumor that the FBI are starting an investigation at the Grimbo Steel Plant. Try to get a line on it. That's a tough assignment, but I'm on my way. Oh, Michael, just a minute. Case, Mr. North wanted me to call on Miss Grayson. Will you see if you can get an appointment for me today? Yes, sir. Michael, I want you to go out there with me. While I'm interviewing Miss Grayson, you have a look around outside. You're expecting trouble there? You never can tell. I've got to give Miss Grayson a little advice about these racketeers. Ah. Did you see this morning's Sentinel, Chief? I was just reading it. That story about Francis Grayson gave me an idea. I thought it would. The syndicate needs a good one about now. 300000 for a private airplane. If Grayson can throw our money away like that, our syndicate can put it to much better use. And how? Maybe we can get back some of the dough the Green Hornet swindled us out of. Yes, and I'm betting right now that the Green Hornet is also planning to cut into the Grayson money. Well, we got to beat him to it. We can, if what I have in mind works out. What is it, Chief? I have a pretty complete plan to relieve Miss Grayson of a substantial sum. More or less painlessly, unless she's stubborn. Her stubbornness shouldn't worry us. First of all, after Dolan and DeLuca finish mapping out the Grayson grounds... You mean they're already on their way? They've been instructed to look the place over. I gotta hand it to you, Chief. Once you get an idea, you sure don't waste any time. Find a gardener or a chauffeur or somebody and get him into conversation. Sure, and I'll talk his head off. Miss Grayson is expecting me. Oh, Miss Grayson is waiting in the library, Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed. How do you do, Miss Grayson? I'm glad to know you, Mr. Reed. Mr. North of Aluminum Products has a great deal of confidence in you. He was most anxious that I should meet you. Mr. North is an old and valued friend of mine. Uh -huh. He seems greatly worried about the story that appeared in your paper about my new plane. Yes, he told me about it. I, well, I want to apologize for running it. Apologize? Yes. But I really can't see what harm it could do. True, I was having it built in secrecy, but uh, it... The danger is this, Miss Grayson. There's a vicious criminal syndicate operating in this city, and the fact that you are spending $300,000 on a plane for your private use might cause them to turn their attention to you. Well, of course. I should have thought of that. Well, I hope you escape their notice. But if any time anything unusual occurs, don't fail to call me. Any one of these numbers here will reach me night or day. Well, thank you, Mr. Reed. And I'm sincerely grateful for your interest. Well, it's been a pleasure, Miss Grayson. Did you talk with any of the servants? I did that. I found a chauffeur back there I don't like the looks of at all at all. All right, Michael, stick around. But be sure to call me at the office before 6. I'll do that, sir. Send the driver in with these and he can give us a signal. Box flowers for Miss Grayson. Sign here. Come on. It's okay, let's go. There's an 
entrance to the basement around here somewhere. The butler down there, lock him up. Gordy, go outside and find the chauffeur in the garden and take care of him. But no gunplay. Just tie him up and lock him in the garage. Nobody in the library. Then take a look around upstairs. Okay. Save your breath, lady. Who are you? What are you doing here? Now, there's no cause for alarm, Miss Grace. Marie! Coming, ma'am. Uh, take care of Marie. Okay. Now, just don't get excited and take it easy. Nothing's going to happen to you. No need to ring. You have a complete new staff of servants on hand ready to answer any cause. Don't think you can frighten me. We still have police protection in this city. Police? They won't do any good now, lady. What is it you want? Money? You guessed it, sister. Now, let's get right down to business. Now, then, we'll make the first check for, say, uh, $10,000. Then we'll take them in installments until we get what we want. That's it. In a series. You see, it might not be so easy to cash the one check for the full amount. And while we're cashing them, we're going to stay right here and help you take care of this house. You'll get no checks out of me. I won't be blackmailed. Ah, uh, we have plenty of ways of making you change your mind, Miss Grace, so you better think it over. Even if I did give you a check, my bank wouldn't pay out that amount of money without verifying with me by phone. We thought of that, too. You see, when the bank telephones, the young lady we have here with us will tell the bank that it's all okay. Hey, look. Hey, lay off that gun. Yeah, but it's that ex-cop, you know, Reed's bodyguard. I know, I know, but Tower said no shooting out here. We'll tie him up and hide him inside. Has Axford phoned yet? No, sir. Have not heard from him all afternoon. Well, that's funny. I told him to check with me before 6 o'clock. Something must have happened to him. Yes. Mr. Axford is always very punctual. I think I'll call Miss Grayson. Yes, this is a Grayson residence. One moment, please. Britt Reed's on the phone. He insists on talking to Miss Grayson. Tell him Miss Grayson will be here in a minute. Please hold the wire, sir. Miss Grayson will be on the phone in a moment. Thank you. Am I talking to Miss Grayson's butler? Uh, no, sir. This is the second man. Uh, here's Miss Grayson now, sir. Oh, yes, Mr. Reed. I'm sorry to trouble you, Miss Grayson, but I'm trying to check on Mr. Axford's whereabouts. Have you seen him around your place? Oh, uh, Mr. Axford left here about uh, 4 o'clock. I'm sure of that because I heard him talking to the gardener about the flowers uh, just a little while before then. You're sure he was there at 4 then? Oh, quite sure. I see. Well, thank you very much, Miss Grayson. Oh, it was no trouble at all, really. Uh, goodbye. <clears throat> well, did I put it over? You were all right. Well, thank you. I'll go upstairs and take care of that day. Oh, all right. She says Axford was there at 4. If he had, then he would have called me. Yes, it is not right Axford to forget, Mr. Britt. There's something wrong there, Cato. Yes, Mr. Britt? The woman I've talked to is not Miss Grayson. Perhaps the police should be notified. No. If that gang has moved in and taken Axford and Miss Grayson prisoner, that's a job for the Green Hornet.
headlights and silence your motor. Then pull in among the trees near the bridge. Whatever happens, stick to our plan. Yes, Mr. Britt. You're going. I was right. He's one of the gang. Then they have taken over the entire house, and our friends are prisoners. Yes, undoubtedly. We'll have to get into the house without being seen. Our only chance is to surprise them. Inside. I'll look for Miss Grayson in Oxford. You call the police. Where is their telephone? There's one in the garage. I noticed the wire today. Grayson, but I'm not exactly dumb. Why, what do you mean? Make out another check and sign it as you did this cancel them with your legal signature. Don't sign that, Miss Grayson. The green Hornet. Keep your hands away from that gun. Miss Grayson, get behind him. Pull that gun out of his pocket. Now, toss it in the corner. Get out to my car. It's under the trees near the bridge. Where do you think you're going? Turn off the lights, Miss Grayson, and run!
of his pocket. Now, toss it in the corner. Get out to my car. It's under the trees near the bridge. Where do you think ah! you're going? Turn off the light, Miss Grayson, and run! Shadows, priest. Smash through that back gate. My job here is done, Miss Grayson. The police will protect you from now on. How can I ever thank you? As before, by forgetting that I was here and keeping your place protected with reliable guards. Yes. Oh, by the way, there's a man locked up in your closet. Locked up? Yes. Will you see that he's released? Yes, I will. The man in the closet, that would be Mr. Axford? It not only would be, Cato, it is. was there. Face to face we were. And me with me hands and feet tied. <laughs> You've got the green hornet on the brain, Michael. I think he's beginning to get you. Maybe you got something there. I got it. I dream about the spalpeen. I'm telling you, Reed, if I didn't have the evidence in my own eyes, I wouldn't believe there was such a creature as the green hornet. Well, why not, Michael? He comes and goes like a spook. Bullets have no effect on him, and that car of his was made by nothing human. Excuse me, boss. Emergency. Just got a call from the reporter on the police beat. There's a riot in a new building. Gunnigan wants me to take Oxford here in cover. Well, go to it. My car's at the side door. Take it easy, Oxford. I don't want to get smashed up. Sure, I used to drive a patrol wagon. Yeah, you keep driving like this, and they'll be hauling you off in one of them. <laughs> Learn to drive. First one at school. I don't think I don't see. Michael Axworth. And whoever told you you could drive a car? Now hold your tongue, O'Sullivan. Sure, it's many a time you rode behind me in the old tie wagon. Many's the time. Too many. It was you that give me these gray hairs. That's not what I heard given to you. Well, what did you hear given to me? Wish, man, have you no shame? Do you want me to tell the world? Be off with you now, before I run you in for impersonating a motorist. Impersonating? Get on with you now. Get on. <laughs> the building that was attacked today is not the only one that I've had trouble on. Well, Mr. Evans, do you know of any reason why your building should have been singled out? Yes, I do. What is it? I'm not a member of the International Builders Syndicate. What does that have to do with it? The syndicate gets most of its contracts by low bids. But it makes big profits by using inferior materials. Many of their buildings are a public menace. They've had several serious accidents. Well, there have been accidents in your buildings too, haven't there? Yes, but they were caused deliberately by the crooks. So that it wouldn't appear that the syndicate's buildings are the only ones poorly constructed. Yes? Axford and Lowry are back from that assignment. Axford says it's important that he see you. Send a bell. All right. On your way, man of action. Why don't you take all day? Where's Lowry? He's given the dope to the rewrite man. He'll be here in a minute. I wanted to... Did you know Mr. Evans, the builder? Oh, how do you how do, 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 sir? do? 
I nearly got myself messed up just now trying to protect one of your buildings. You saw damage being done? Both to the building and to myself also. Do you think the attack was deliberate? Of course it was. One man was pouring water on bags of cement, and from the corner of my eye, I saw another one baiting on a hot hoist with a sledgehammer. Were any of the men caught? I caught one of them, but his gang rescued him. But I'd know them fellas again if ever I put my eye on them. <laughs> Private Joker, can you tell us? You'd think that riot was a personal attack on Axford to hear him tell it. He's inside dramatizing it to the boss right now. Go on in. And with a little help, I'd have caught all the hoodlums single-handed. <laughs> oh, Lowry. This is Mr. Evans, the builder. Hello. Lowry's one of our reporters here. Now, Mr. Evans, you claim that the syndicate is putting up defective buildings. Now, doesn't that imply dishonesty in the city inspector's office? No, the building department isn't exactly dishonest, but it is very inefficient. It indicates more than inefficiency when dangerous buildings are certified as safe. This isn't for publication, but I think that several of the deputy inspectors are easily influenced, to put it mildly. Can you name any particular inspectors? I'd rather not. Mr. Evans, the Sentinel is always ready to attack rackets when it has the proper ammunition but it can't risk libel suits by publishing rumors and personal opinions. But I know that everything that I claim is true. Yes, but you can't prove it. No, if I could have, I'd have gone to the district attorney instead of coming here. Them thugs were out to wreck his building all right. Granted, Michael, but gives me facts, not rumors. Well, didn't I see a man pouring water on cement and another with a sledge? We'll print that and anything else you dig up that you can verify. I'll send Miss Case in on your way out. That sounds like our execute. Come on, Mike. I you don't quit that I Yes, Mr. Reed. Case, I want you to get the name or names of all the city inspectors on those new buildings where the accidents have occurred recently. And concentrate on all those erected by the International Builder Syndicate. Yes, sir. It was a mistake to pull that raid in the daytime. I knew it was risky, but I was sure it'd make Evans fall into line and join our international builder syndicate. The raid was broken up too quickly. Hit it, Evans, again, but next time at night, as I advised you before. Okay, Chief, but I'm betting our next raid on Evans will compel him to join our syndicate. Oh, the international is a good graft. It may prove to be the richest of our many angles. Oh, there were a couple of sentinel reporters at the rumpus this morning. They almost caught one of our men. We've got to stop this interference from the sentinel. Tell the boys to turn the heat on that bunch again. Here's the name of the city inspector you wanted. Tenney, eh? I know the name. I think I know the man. Is Axford ready yet? He'll be right up. Right. Goodbye, Case. Goodbye. Come on, Michael. It's always a thrill to see an addition go out. You know, Mike, uh, a newspaper can do a lot of good. It can, that, sir. There's a central truck now. Get after it. I'll stay here and wait for the other car.
Did he get away? Yes, unfortunately. Why do you suppose them roughnecks mobbed that truck? Well, that's easy, because the Sentinel's been attacking the rackets. Oh, yes. Come on, let's go back and see what's happening. Oh, boy, am I going to be stiff by the time I get home. Everything under control? Yes, thanks to your help, Mr. Reed. Well, I was here too, you know. Until I took a party over that barrel. <laughs> ah, thanks for your help, officer. Too bad they all got away. They were sure a bunch of slippery devils. Stay aware of that. Come on, Michael. Yes. You have been in an accident? It was no accident. They did it on purpose. It's nothing serious, Cato. Come on, help me get cleaned up. Hornets calling on a Mr. C. Smith tonight. Reed. I couldn't find any record in my book of that truck we lost today, so I'm going down to headquarters to look over there at Rogue's Gallery. You better have dinner first. Ah, oh, sure, I'll neither eat nor sleep till they lay me hands on that spalpy. That's the spirit that makes Ace Report. Yes. Well, we messed up some Sentinel delivery trucks today. We'll not only smash his trucks, but his buildings, too, if Reed doesn't mind his own business. Reed and his bodyguard tried to get Smith. It's fortunate for us he didn't. Smith's a good worker, but he might break under pressure. What about the Evans angle? We've got to keep right after him. We're paying another of his jobs a visit tonight. The new commercial building on Market Street. Your gas gun, sir. Tonight, Cato, the Green Hornet calls on Mr. Smith. Smith's house. I'll see if he's home. Wait. There's a car coming out of the driveway. Well, that's Smith. We'll follow him. This is a good place. Close in on him. Hey, what's the big idea? Green Hornet. You're all right, Smith. What have you got out for tonight? Another wrecking job? What do you mean? I was just, I was just going to wait. Stop stalling. What building were you going to work on tonight? Then I tell you. Quit what? lying. Hey, don't use that gun on me, please. I'll tell you. It's a new commercial building on Market Street. Who's handling the job of wrecking it? I don't know his name. Lying will get you nowhere. Quick, who is he? Danny. He handles all the jobs. Does he work for the International Syndicate? Yeah. Who's the big boss? I don't know. I take my orders from Danny. Move over. What are you going to do to me? I'm going to turn you into the police. They ain't got nothing on me. You're wrong, Smith. They've got plenty on you. Find a telephone that I can use safely. We'll tell Oxford where to find Smith. Headquarters. Is Mike Axford there? No, I don't want to speak to him. Just tell him there's a man he wants to meet in a parked car in the 200 block on Pine Street. Jim, look there. That's the Green Hornet. Expect us to catch a thing like that. Yeah. Good work. We've lost them. 
Where to now, sir? The new commercial building. To smash the building rocket. Duck out and lay low. I sure will. Thank you, Mr. Panic. Get going. Wait a minute. Better go out the back way. Who was that? The Green Hornet. Right, Panic. How do you know me? That doesn't matter. The fact remains that I do, and I know what you're up to. What do you want? I want you to go through this building with me. What for? Never mind what for. Get moving. Leave that lantern there. Stop here. What do you want? You're connected with a criminal syndicate. Your job is to wreck buildings. I want the name of the man at the head of your organization. Fat chance you're Stanley getting that, even if I knew it. But you're going to... I don't know. Oh, yes, you do. Your expression betrayed you. Speak up. We've got to get out of here. Why? Those men are going to blow up this building. I thought you said you didn't know them. They work for me. We've got to get out of here. This ought to bring Evans into the syndicate. Yeah, he ought to be brought to his senses now. Yeah, that down. We're not leaving this place until you tell me what I want to know. I can't do that. You've got to. Come on out. Get to the car. Don't call those men. I tell you, we'll be killed if we don't get out of here. Are you going to talk? I don't know who's a chief. Don't lie to me. I'm not. You've got to believe me. I take my orders from a young-looking guy with gray hair, scar on his face, calls himself Bourdain. Bourdain? All right, let's go. We've got to get out of here. Why? Those men are going to blow up this building. I thought you said you didn't know them. 
They work for me. We've got to get out of here. This ought to bring Evans into the syndicate. Yeah, he ought to be brought to his senses now. We're not leaving this place until you tell me what I want to know. I can't do that. You've got to. Come on out. Get to the car. Don't call those men. I tell you, we'll be killed if we don't get out of here. Are you going to talk? I don't know who's a chief. Don't lie to me. I'm not. You've got to believe me. I take my orders from a young-looking guy with gray hair, scar on his face, calls himself Bordine. Good. All right, let's go. upon the confession of Smith, the police raided the offices of the International Builders Syndicate, but found the offices deserted and all books and papers removed. Watch this. Smith was captured by Mike Axford, Sentinel reporter, who claims he downed the racketeer. Up. What do you mean, claims? Sure, the man fought like a demon. Yeah, well, Smith told me that the Green Hornet knocked him out. You found him and drug him over to the police station. And would you be taking the word of a dirty crook against that of an upstanding citizen like myself? Sure, and I would at that. Well, hello, folks. The hello. boss in? Hi, Fulton. What's the good news? How's it all well doing? Fine. Mr. Reed will be glad to see you. Well, I've got news for all of you. Come on along. Well. You mean you got iron in that wildcat well of yours? You really struck it, huh? <laughs> Hello, Reed. How are you? Hello, Fulton. What's all the riot about? Can't a newspaper publisher have any privacy anymore? Looks like we're in the money, boss. Oh, really? Well, anyway, we're drilling into the hard rock, and we should have a gusher any day now. Uh oh, wait a minute, Jack. Wait a minute. Even experts don't predict gushers. That for your experts. I'm a wildcatter, and a wildcatter has a sixth sense for a gusher. Those $50 shares you folks chipped in to help me out on may be worth 10 or 20 times that amount. Well, uh, we're all millionaires, I can see that. What are we going to do with our ill-gotten gains? Well, I'm going to buy a fur coat. And I'm going to have me a car built that'll catch the green hornet the first time I lay me eyes on it. Oh. <laughs> well, how about you, Laurie? Well, when I put money into an all well, I just say, down the hatch and forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a report from one of our men at Fulton's oil field. I guess we didn't make any mistake when we loaned him that 25 grand to buy up the acreage around his test well. Get to the point. The test well's coming in. They struck hard rock yesterday, and everything indicates that they've really got something out there. Oh. Kane speaking. Oh, yes, Chief. One moment. Get me John Fulton's note. That's right, Chief. Due today, without grace. I've asked Fulton to come in. All right. Be ready for trouble when Fulton discovers he's a little mixed in his dates. Are you sure the note will bear inspection? Absolutely. I defy anybody to detect the alteration under a glass. 
Yeah, I've got two men here in case he starts anything. Goodbye. Well, it's been a tough job to finance, Britt. And if it wasn't for you and a few more of my friends putting up the money for the equipment, I'm afraid I couldn't have made it. Well, Fulton, how did you handle the option on the acreage surrounding the well? By borrowing 25 grand on a short-term note. I hope there's no slip-up. Not a chance. My note still has 30 days to run, and long before that, I'll be rolling in money. <laughs> Good luck to you. Thanks, Brent. I hope you put it over. I certainly will try. I... Fulton's here. Send him in. Will you come in, Mr. Fulton? Certainly will. How are you, Fulton? Fine. Heard you wanted to see me, Kane. What can I do for you? How's that well coming along? Great. Be flowing by tomorrow. Good. You made me pay pretty stiff interest in that money, Kane. But I don't begrudge it. The hundred acres I tied up is going to be worth a million. That's fine. Did you bring the check with you? Check. <laughs> you don't have to worry about the check, Kane. Why, by the time your note is due, I'll be rolling in money. By the time it's due? It was due today at noon. Why, you're crazier than a hoot owl. That note still has 30 days to run. Somebody's crazy, but I don't think it's me. There must be some mistake. The note I signed was due on the 31st, not the 1st, as this one reads. That's your signature, isn't it? Yes, it is. Then don't Welsh. If your weld failed to come in on time, that's your hard luck. Of course, if you wish to take the matter into court, I don't have to bring the matter into court. I'm going to tear up that note and write you a new one with the right date. Now hand it over. Get back. Bonnie, throw this crook out. True, boss. The sheriff has attached Fulton's oil well and the Kane outfit's taking it over. Have you checked on Kane? Yeah, that outfit operates just within the law. Kane claims that Fulton assaulted him when he tried to collect his note. He and his men threw Fulton out and... Fulton, what happened? Give us a story. I'll give you the story. I'll get that Kane if it's the last thing I ever do, that dirty crook. Now, wait a minute. Look, on your way, Larry. This but... isn't for publication. Boss, oh, I... Go on, go on. Okay. Sit down, Jack. There goes your fur coat, Casey. Down the hatch. Crepe hanger. The note I signed was due the 31st. Now the crooks have altered it to the 1st. Why, the... Jack, if it's been altered, we'll show that when we get into court. I'm not going into court. The job he did was perfect. You mean you saw the note? Yes, I did, and it read the 1st. Why, he's branded me a crook before you and all my friends. I'll get him if it's the last thing I do. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. Oh, let me go. I'll handle this my own oh, way. Oh, you're not going to. Did you ring, Mr. Reed? Uh, uh, yes. Yes, call the apartment and have Cato get the limousine down here right away. Yes, sir. And have him come in the alley entrance and keep the shades drawn. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Jack, but get this straight. Whatever dirty work there is in this deal, we know you're not responsible for. And your friends are behind you 100%. Thanks, Brett. I'm sorry I lost my head. I only want you to know that I had been tricked. I'm sure of it. There's a warrant out for you, and you're going to hide out in my apartment until I can clear this thing up for you. Anything you say, Brett. Cato is on his way. Good. And get a hold of Axford and tell him that he and I are going to make a little call. Yes, sir. Britt Reed, the Sentinel's outside with another man. What the devil is Reed after? Are Bonnie and Sam here? Yeah. All right, send Reed in. And tell the boys to stand by. Okay. Will you come in, please? How do you do, gentlemen? How do you do, Mr. Kane? Have a chair. Thank you. What can I do for you? We'd like to know about John Fulton's oil well. Your man Larry's been here, Mr. Reed. I told him all there was to tell. Fulton had a note come to you, and... We didn't come here for a story, Kane. It just so happens that Axford and I invested a small amount of money in Fulton's well. Since the company is unincorporated, we want to know where we stand. And see here, Mr. Kane. I've known Johnny Fulton for five years, and an honester lad... That's all, Michael. Now about those shares, Kane. 
Legally, Mr. Reed, you and the rest of the investors have a leg to stand on. However, we will no doubt be able to pay off the small stockholders up to the amount of their investments. That's very generous. We want to be fair, and no doubt it would be some expense if we were obliged to go to court. But, Reed, if the well turns out to be negotiator... That hasn't, Michael. You're lucky to get your money back. Thanks very much for the information. You're quite welcome. Good day. Good day, sir. Where's Mr. Fulton? He's asleep now, Mr. Britt. Sleep, huh? How is he? Not very good. Keeps muttering in his sleep about crooks and changing date on note. Hmm. Lock his door on the outside. The Green Hornet's going to have a look at that note. Close that safe, Kane. The Green Hornet. Right, Kane. The Green Hornet. What do you want? John Fulton's note for $25,000. Fulton's note? I, I haven't it. Don't lie to me. I'm not lying. I gave the note to Galt. Who is Galt? He's a new owner of the Fulton Oil Properties. I sold out to him and... He wanted the note to attach to his bill of sale in case the title was questioned. Then you thought it might be questioned, huh? Where is Galt now? He's out at the well. Get him on the phone. Come on, come on. this well the first thing in the morning. There'll be a truck here with explosives any time now. Well, why shoot a well that's drilled the hot rock? It's dangerous, and besides... I'll decide what's dangerous around here. All you have to do is to obey orders. Hello? Hello, Gold. This is Kane. Have you got that note of John Fulton's with you, or did you record it? I got it right here in my pocket. I haven't had time to record it yet. Why? The boss said it was okay. Well, we might want to have it around in case this matter goes to court. Keep it with you. That's all. Well, it says the chief told him the note was okay. So you and Galt are part of the syndicate, huh? Now come across fast, Kane. Who's the chief? I can't tell you that. They'd kill me. <laughs> Fulton's note, Mr. Britt? Not yet, but I will before the night's over. Faster. Here's your nitro cartridges. Where will you have them? Right here on the platform. Okay. Don't any of you fellas trip over that. It'll blow you from here to Mars. When do you start shoot the well? Tomorrow morning, as soon as the crew get here. Good luck to you. Miss Kudara. Well, I still think you better continue drilling. You're not supposed to think. If you're going to continue to work for me, you'll have to obey orders without question. Well, I only thought. Never mind what you thought. Give me a flashlight. Hey, Mr. Gold. Don't move, either of you. 
Green Hornet. I knew there was something phony about this job. There is. Galt, I want John Fulton's note that Kane endorsed over to you. How do you know about that? Perhaps you told me about it. Come on, hand it over, quick. I know tricks, Galt. Give me that. You on October 1st, eh? That was a clever job of altering the date. You're crazy. No one altered that note. Talk fast if you want to live. The date was the 31st when Fulton signed the note. Who changed the date? Quick. Don't shoot. Kane used disappearing ink when he wrote the three on the date. It faded out a few hours later and left only the one. That note's good in any court in the country. That's no good to you, Horner. How about a little split? I don't need a split. With what I know, I can force Fulton to pay me $50,000 for that note. Huh. 50000 We'll do better than that. We? Oh, you're a part of the crime syndicate, eh? Who's the boss of the outfit? I don't belong to no outfit. I'm just a hired hand here. Stop! of the outfit. I don't belong to no outfit. I'm just a hired hand here. Stop!
There's a man. But he's dead. Why, it's Gall. He's the man who's supposed to have bought all his property. Supposed to? What do you mean, supposed to? Well, you got me. There's something crooked about the whole deal. You're not badly hurt, sir. No. But it was a close call. Too bad that accident happened to Mr. Fulton's property. Yes. The loss of the rig is a serious blow. But he's got his will back. And he'll have his note back soon. You got the note? Yes. I'm going to give it to Fulton as soon as I get back to the apartment. You wake him up. I'll wait in the garage for your signal. Are you awake, Mr. Fulton? Yes, Cato. I must have been very tired to have slept so long. If you will step into the living room, I will prepare some food. Thank you, Cato. Is Mr. Reed in? Not yet, sir. All right. Hold it. The Green Hornet. Get away from that door. Back up to the wall, both of you. Here's that note you were tricked into signing. Where? How did you get it? Never mind that. My getting it destroyed your rig. My rig was destroyed? Yes, but your well is undamaged, and you still have a month to get it back into production and pay off your indebtedness. Why, this note, when I signed it, was due on the 31st. It was changed to the 1st by means of disappearing ink. What's your interest in this? That's my business. Well, it's my business to know what you expect to get out of this. Get in the other room, both of you. I'll handle this, Spalpeen. I finally caught you, Harnett. Now I'll soon settle you. Hold this door shut. Oh, the Harnett, hold this door shut till I... till I get me gun. Stand back. Shorty's Michael Axford will take over now. He's locked at the Sparapin. Uh, your keys, Cato. Hurry. Oh. You butter fingers give way. Now come on, open it. Hurry up. Nobody can walk through solid walls unless he's a spook. But he's done it. You think the Hornet is supernatural? I wouldn't put it past him. And to think I was face to face with him and me without a gun. What's all the excitement, boys? The Green Hornet was here, himself in person, and got away. Well, what could he possibly want here? He was looking for me. It calls for an explanation. All was about that note I signed. He gave it back to me. Let's all go in the other room where we can sit down and talk it over. So, the Green Hornet brought you back your note, eh, Fulton? Yes, Reed, but now that I have it, what shall I do with it? I'll pay it back when it comes due. You're right. The extra 30 days my note has to run will enable me to save my investment. Thanks for all you've done for me, Reed. I oh. certainly appreciate it. Good night. Good night. Oh, sure, tis a black day for me, so it is. To have the Green Hornet so close to me and then let him slip through me fingers. Ah, oh, Michael. If you don't catch the Green Hornet, I don't know who will. Uh, good night, sir. Good night. Boy, that was a narrow escape, Cato. I didn't expect Axford back so soon. Yes, and I never knew Axford to be without his gun before. I wonder how much longer I'll be able to keep up this dual role. Long enough to finish what you have set out to do, I hope, Mr. Britt. <laughs> Had some close calls lately, but I've got to keep up this thing until I run down the head of the crime syndicate. Imagine 
in that, boss? They estimate last night's haul at over a hundred grand. And not one of the hijackers was caught? Nary a one. They vanished into the night just like the Green Hornet does. Say, that gives me an idea. Do you suppose that... <laughs> <laughs> Michael, the Green Hornet would have to be a Superman to get mixed up in half of the things you accuse him of. Laugh if you want to. But it's my theory the Hornet's got something to do with this hijacking racket. I'm willing to bet that he hasn't. How are you going to prove he hasn't? How are you going to prove he has? Well, I... I... Michael, you should know better than to slander the Green Hornet when Case is around. You know, sometimes I almost believe she's in cahoots with a knife riding devil. Well, he'd better stay out of this deal. I heard the police were tipped off. The police? Yeah. The state police were tipped off this morning. There's going to be a big hijack job pulled off on the coast road tonight. I'll tell Gunnigan to have you cover it. Thanks, boss. I'll go out and get more dope on it right now. Oh, wait a minute, Michael. Well, don't you think I ought to go with the kid? No, no. I have another plan. What's that? Michael, that hijack gang is, is very efficient. They proved that by the size of the hall and by the fact that not one of them was captured. So? Well, it, it just doesn't seem reasonable that a gang like that would allow a tip-off. Well, I know, but the state coppers got one. Sure they did. But how do we know it isn't a phony? Misleading the police so that they can pull a job somewhere else. By golly, it might be. Now, what other road would be left unguarded? Well, the Inland Highway, of course. Yes, that's it. And I'm betting that's where the action's going to be tonight. Well, I'd better tell Lowry that. No, no, let him go. I may be wrong. So we can cover both roads between us, you see. Well, what time will we be leaving? Right after dinner. We'll hit the Inland Highway just before dark, and we'll patrol it from one end to the other. Here, I'm going to watch those fellows from the edge of the bank. I'll be right on the job if anything happens. Here it comes. You won't get hurt. All right, you guys, tie him up and put him in that truck. I was right, Michael. They're hijacking that truck. on the public highway. Yeah, it's their nerve that helps them get away with it. Looks like an ordinary breakdown, transferring goods from one truck to the other. Well, shouldn't we be doing something about it? Now, for the time being, we'll just watch. They finished. Now they'll drive the empty truck somewhere and abandon it. Well, what will we be doing about it? Yeah, we'll try to find out where they take the stolen goods, if we can. Trail him at a safe distance. It's a car tailless with the lights out. Oh, yeah? We'll find out who's in it. I'll be back. Stop that shooting, you fools. Get out of that truck. Well, if it isn't me old friend Axman. And the other guy must have been Britt Reed. Well, Dolan will get him. Says you. <laughs> get over that car. Oh, 
was that? It must have been him. We missed him. Well, come on. Why don't we leave this guy in the ditch? Because we can use him to trap Reed. If Dolan and Lefty don't get him, what do we do with Reed's car? Leave it to the other boys. Quit asking questions. Help me get this mug in the car. <laughs> Mr. Reed's apartment. Hello, Cato. Yes, Mr. Reed. Bring Black Beauty and the Green Hornet outfit. Pick me up just off the Inland Highway, a mile north of Greendale, and hurry. Yes, sir, at once. your lights. Turn to the right and keep going until you come to a big farmhouse. to know. Yes, I would. And I'm going to, even if I have to use this gun. No, don't. I'll tell. They went to the Harbor Road after a truckload of silk. Who's in charge of the job? A fellow named DeLuca. Who's his boss? I don't know. DeLuca rented his place for me, and that's the only one I know. Hey! <laughs> their car. They're just getting away with that truck. After them. Stop this truck.
away with that truck. After them. Stop this truck. That was a very bad place to fall. It could have been worse. I jumped just as the truck went over the edge. The men who were fighting with you in the truck? They're still alive. I saw the guard pulling the driver who was gassed out of the cab. The police? They'll get the hijackers and the truckload of silk. Come on. When I finally broke the carbs they had me tied with, I was going to call the police when I heard a siren and along they came. Yes, Michael. As soon as I escaped, I called the police and told them to go out to the farmhouse. Well, that's another racket smashed. Uh, you know, there's just one thing that troubles me. When I finally got my eyes open, this was in front of me. The seal of the Green Hornet. That's odd. Odd, you say? I gory, it's magic. Yes. Yes, all right. I guess we can depend on those truckmen. Sure, they don't know a thing. Our agent across the border is waiting for a consignment of six, eight, and 12-cylinder motors for the equipment of mechanized units. We can't buy serviced motors unless we make a statement of their destination. We're not going to buy them. We're going to collect them. We won't get away with it if this rag the Sentinel continues to interfere. Did you read that? Or, Dean, you talk too much and do too little. You were detailed to take care of Britt Reed months ago. I'd have got him, too, if the Green Hornet hadn't interfered. Yes, that's right. The Green Hornet, a lone wolf who plays your own game and makes monkeys out of all of you. Oh, yes. That's enough. Now for the getting of these motors. It's got to be done efficiently and quickly and finish before the police can organize to combat it. I have here a list of recent purchases of motors of the type we need with duplicate keys to the door and the ignition of their cars. Okay, send in Lowry, please. Yes, sir. Chief wants you, Lowry. This your yard, Lowry? Yep, fresh from police headquarters. Boss, that gang struck in every corner of town at the same time. Twenty cars disappeared before the police were even on the move. Well, what do they say down at headquarters? Oh, the usual thing, arrest expected any minute. Evidently, this is the work of the crime syndicate. The fact that only certain types of cars were stolen indicates that they were wanted for some particular purpose. That's right. I've got a list of the missing cars up to an hour ago. Good. So you think your new car is as fast as the Green Hornet? As fast as it? Sure, I'd overhaul that murdering bandit like his jalopy was tied to a hitching post. <laughs> Come on out with me now and take a spin. I'll prove it to you. Sorry, man of action. I have work to do. Well, tomorrow then. Okay. If it isn't stolen by then. Of course, you know what's happening to a lot of new cars, don't you? Take my word for it, Casey. The Green Hornet is behind these car stealings. And tis Michael Axford who will be right on his heels. Mm
Logan's men outside. Bring them in. Hello, Agus. Hi. You know Bardeen? How are you? Hello. You guys are overdoing this car stealing racket. Why try to get them all at once? Special order for a certain type of motors, that's why we're here. A lot of the owners of these motors we're after happen to be customers of yours. Oh, I do only part of it. After all, my racket here is safe. Drinking, dancing, gambling. Relieving careless customers of their fat wallets. Listen, Hakus. Krogan didn't put you in this dump to run it your way. I told you Krogan wanted help. Now, if we can't get it from you, we'll make arrangements to take this layout over. As well as I was just kidding. After all, anything Krogan wants done. That's better. We'll put a couple of our men here tonight to pick up the cars we want. Your job will be to see that the customers don't make a discovery in time to squawk. Sure, the car'd do a hundred if you hadn't squawked. If I hadn't squawked, you wouldn't have a car by now. <laughs> All right, Casey. Now, just to keep peace in the family, I'll buy you a drink of soda pop. Agus isn't the right man to run a place like this. No, he's got no nerve. I'm surprised the chief put him in charge. Well, what's the matter? Who are those men? Two of the murdering thugs that tightened me up at Miss Grayson's house. Oh, sure, if I didn't have you here, I could bag them both. I'm sure you could, Michael. Well, we better report this place to Reed. Come on. But, Reed, I tell you, I am right. It was two of the outfit we met up with at the Grayson house. And they were saying that the boss was making a mistake to let this fellow Haggis run the joint. Haggis? You mean the guy that runs a nightclub on the Camden Road? Sure, that's the place. Do you know him, Laurie? I know the place. But that club angle is just a front for the undercover gambling. Sounds like the place needs looking over. Michael, suppose you and I go out there tonight. Well, they'll spot you two as reporters and you won't find out anything. Why don't you take me with you and we'll look like real customers? <laughs> sure, Casey wants to step out in the nightlife. That's a very good idea, too. Case, Michael will call for you at 9 o'clock tonight. I'll be wearing a tuxedo. Yes, sir. And that goes for you, too. Oh, for that. <laughs> All right, Reed. Casey's down in the car. I'll be right down, Michael. You understand what you're to do, Cato? Yes, sir. Let's go. Remember, you're not going to a fire. I... Uh... out of sight. Miss Case and I are going to look around. All right, sir. Sprint 
Reed just drove up. He's going to the club right now. With a girl. Great. This is just the chance we've been waiting for. He mustn't leave here alive. We've got to take care of Reed's car, Dolan. Yeah, that won't be so easy. Mike Axford is watching it. like a den of thieves. Looks like a respectable place. That's what it's supposed to look like. Two, please. We better order so we'll look like customers. Jerry's serving him at a table near the door. You can't do anything out there. Have him paged. Tell him he's wanted on the phone in here. Hey, what are you going to do? Go on and have him want... paged. Shall we dance? Why not? All for Mr. Reed. All for Mr. Brett Reed. Here. Telephone call, Mr. Reed. The phone's in the office over there. Thank you. I'll be right in. Will you excuse me for a moment? I don't like this. Nobody knows you're here. Yes, Cato knows. I'll be right back. It's coming. The girl went outside. Come in, Mr. Reed. The phone's right here. Thank you. Put your hands in the air, Reed. Stay where you are. What's the meaning of all this? Shut up. See if he's got a gun. What's it, Casey? Come inside, quick. I think Mr. Reed's in trouble. Get in the car, sister. If you scream, you're finished. Come on, get going. You interfered with us for the last time, Reed. Can't be as bad as that. There are too many people in there for a killing. There isn't going to be any killing here. Where's your car? Up for the rear door. All right. Get her over. You know, I came prepared for trouble. One of my men's waiting outside. Mike Axford and your secretary have been taken away from here a while ago. You seem to have planned this very well. You plan everything well. Here's the rope. All right, time up. Go ahead and time up. They've carried off Case and Axford. Carried off? Where? The Green Hornet has to find out. I'll force one of them to show me where they've taken Case and Axford. We'll go in this car? No, I'll go in one of theirs. You follow. I understand. Reed's escape means to us. He'll get the police. No, no, he won't. Reed won't dare make a move against you as long as we've got Axford and the girl. If you got them safe, where were they taken? To the warehouse where we're packing the motors. And Axford goes out of there in a box when we ship him. We'll hold the girl to bring Reed to terms. You can do what you like with the big Irishman. He's given me plenty of trouble, but I'm cutting in on those stolen motors. The Green Hornet! Lower your voice. Now, where are those motors? Talk fast. All right, Hornet. I'll talk. Now, you're going to answer my questions. Oh, don't shoot. I'll tell. The motors are in a warehouse down on Grant Street. All right, start moving. Where? To your car. We're going to that warehouse. We gotta get these motors on board ship tonight. What about these explosives? They go in the other truck. Somebody from the chief. What's this? A couple of snoopers to be taken care of. Lock the door.
This is Grant Street. Where's the warehouse? Six blocks down, on the left side of the street. Hey, Dolan. Run this truck in the shed and bring in the red one. We'll load these cases of explosives. Why don't you try doing some work yourself sometime? Get going. There'll be another box aboard that red truck. Go on, get over there, Irish. You dirty mug, turn the girl loose or I'll... The girl will be taken care of. Open up. That's the police. The police? Open up. Snoopers to be taken care of. Lock the door. This is Grant Street. Where's the warehouse? Six blocks down, on the left side of the street. Hey, Dolan. Run this truck in the shed and bring in the red one. We'll load these cases of explosives. Why don't you try doing some work yourself sometime? Get going. There'll be another box aboard that red truck. Go on, get over there, Irish. You dirty mug, turn the girl loose or I'll... The girl will be taken care of. Open up. It's the police. The police. Open up. Free. Quick, get out of here. You're not hurt, sir. I'm all right. Quick, this way.
Well, Michael, it looks like the Green Hornet did you a good turn last night out of the Grant Street warehouse. Ah, sure, he was just trying to get on me good side so I'd lay off trying to run him down. Boss, if I got a story. What is it? A new angle on the big fire last night. You mean the one down at the Crawford warehouse? Yeah, I went down to the ruins trying to get a story from Crawford. Any luck? No, he wouldn't talk to me, but he talked to this guy plenty, his watchman. Jasper Vale, sentenced for arson, paroled six months ago. You mean he was the watchman at the warehouse that burned? That's right. I recognize him and dug his picture out of the morgue. Paroled Officer Russell Spencer. A case. Get me Russell Spencer down at the parole office, please. Yes, sir. Lowry, I think you've got something here. Crawford has had three fires in the last six months. Just the length of time this fellow Vale has been out of the pen. Mr. Reed calling Russell Spencer. Just a minute. Yes, Case. I have Mr. Spencer for you. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello, Mr. Spencer. This is Britt Reed of the Sentinel. I'm trying to locate a man by the name of Jasper Vale. Oh, he did. Thank you. He just left Spencer's office to go to Crawford's home. He's still working for Crawford. Holy crow, we'll nab him at Crawford's house and bring him here. Oh, wait a minute. You get over there, and when he leaves, trail him. Okay, right. This is Crawford talking. Listen, Crogan, I just had a call from Harrington, the adjuster. He says they're holding up payment of the claim. That claim is airtight, Crawford. If you did what I told you to do, we have nothing to worry about. They must have some reason for holding up the payment. They may have found something. Listen, Crawford, your job is to collect that insurance. See that you do it. What's that? Of course we're going to pull off the job tonight. Crawford will make more money on this deal than he ever made in his life, and he's squawking, eh? He's afraid some of that merchandise may have been discovered. <laughs> How could it be discovered? That stuff's on its way to Europe. Those foreign agents sure work fast. Trouble down there at the parole office? What a snitch. I told Spencer I'm still working with Crawford. Looks like everything is here. Yeah, it's all here, all ready to roll. Gasoline, excelsior, waste. Looks like it's all there. Yep. It's all set. Now, you better get going. The boys will have the warehouse almost cleaned out by the time you get there. Hey, how's it about a lantern? You know, I always work with a lantern. Wait a minute. I've got one in there. We'll see you down the warehouse. Okay. I'll lock up. Vail in that truck. Where's he going? To some warehouse. But Dolan and that other crook, Deluca, had that truck loaded with something, and I'm betting it's dynamite. Come on, we better follow him. The alibi. We were oh. chasing the truck. It's loaded with dynamite. Yeah? Well, what are you loaded with? Now, look, officer. My name is Oxford. Michael Oxford. I used to be on the force myself. Well, well, well. That's a funny thing. I used to be in the pickle business. 
But that doesn't give me the right to run around in a vinegar barrel. Where's right. your license? You believe that Crawford is a party to the conspiracy? Undoubtedly. He fires an honest watchman to hire Vale, a parole convict. Then come a series of fires, covered by insurance on merchandise that have been removed previously from the warehouse. If Axford and Lowry are right, those crooks are going to pull off something big tonight. The Green Hornet's going to find out where Vale delivered that truckload of explosives. Then we are riding to... To Crawford's home, 1762 Oakdale. I think that gentleman can be induced to give the Green Hornet some valuable information. Pull that thing off tonight. Will you get this through your head, Crawford? Nobody will know you're connected with this deal. When we took over control of the Continental Warehouse, I had everything made out in Bordine's name. You've got his bill of sale to you, haven't you? Yes, I got it right here. But that isn't the thing. Wait here. All right, Krogan. I'll put this bill of sale in the safe tonight. Then I'll see you. Hold it, Crawford. I'll take that bill of sale. Who are you and what do you want? Green Hornet. Yes, the Green Hornet, Crawford. And you know I don't stand for any foolishness. Hand it over. So, Mr. Bordine has taken over controlling interest in the Continental Warehouse and secretly given you a bill of sale. What business is that of yours? Plenty. I've got several things to settle with Mr. Bordine. What are you going to do with that? Keep it. What for? For my information, I'm cutting myself in. Cutting in? On what? On your arson racket. You're barking up the wrong tree. I'm not mixed up in any arson racket. That being the case, you won't mind my calling the police. The police? What for? Because you'll either cut me in or I'll expose your racket. You wouldn't dare call the police. You're just as big a racketeer as any of us. Then you admit you are a racketeer. I don't admit anything. It's up to you. Operator, get me the police. Wait! Don't call the police! I'll cut you in. Now you're talking sense. What warehouse is Vale firing tonight? The one on Locust Street and Edge Hill Road. That's all I wanted to know. <laughs> Send the police quickly. 1762 Oakdale Avenue. Warehouse at Locus and Edgel. Step on it, Cato. We may be too late now. How soon will they be back? As soon as he establishes an alibi. Take the flashlight. You stand by in case I signal. Yes, sir. Well, that's the last of it. Good. Take it away, Jack. You fellas go to the truck. That sure was a big job. Sixteen truckloads of stuff. Yeah. Yes, we might as well. 
we'll get down to the car and beat it. Yeah, wait a minute. What about Al? He's inside. I'm leaving him here until Vale gets back. I want him to take a last look around and see that everything's all right. I get it. Blaze, Locust Street, Nedge Hill Road.
house ablaze, Locust Street and Edge Hill Road. Investigate the fire now burning in the Continental Warehouse. You'll find empty packing cases heavily insured. Also, evidence indicating arson. Who is this? No mention of the Hornet being in the warehouse. Do you think the Sentinel's covering him up? No. Al is the only one who knew he was there, and Al isn't talking. The lucky thing I got Crawford away before the police arrived at his home. We still don't know how much Crawford told the Hornet. The Hornet sure wrecked our insurance deal. He wouldn't have if I'd followed my hunch and put Ferranti on the job. You must have a lot of confidence in Ferranti, making him head of the building association. Why shouldn't I have? He's put over everything I've asked him to. But he's got a bad reputation. That's what helps him grab control and hold it. The association members don't want him. Well, they've got him. If we lost control of the association, we'd lose a cool million. But Ferranti will swing them into line or wreck it. Oh, I'm afraid the Sentinel will blast him clear out of town. Oh, no, they won't. They won't dare attack the association or anything it does. I hope you're right. A newspaper has other obligations, Gunnigan, besides news. It has a duty to the public. You know, freedom of the press doesn't mean much unless we use that freedom, and for the public good. But an editorial attack on the head of a big association is dynamite. He's head of that association because of force, not because they want him. Ferranti is a known racketeer, and the Sentinel's going to keep on telling the people that until he's thrown out. Well, all the men working under him are on the level. Of course they are, but they're scared stiff. I don't blame him. Ferranti doesn't use kid gloves. <laughs> Brass knuckles are more his style. I just got a phone call. It's about Ferranti. From whom? A, a guy that wouldn't give his name. I just happened to answer a phone in the city room. And... Will you please learn to get to the point? Well, holy crow, I will if you'll let me. Take it easy, Michael. The guy said he called because the Sentinel was trying to toss Ferranti out of the association and he wanted to help. Well, what does he propose doing? Well, I don't know, but he wants me to meet him in the dark canyon road tonight. He told me to come in a car alone and to blink me lights twice. All right, go ahead. Will I go, Reed? Yes, if you can get anything on Ferranti, you're in line for a bonus. You'll be there and right on time. Yes, sir. Time to move. Everything is ready, sir. Axford's heading into something. He may need help. You mean to be there before him? Yes. Black Beauty all set? Yes, sir. Good. Whatever happens, the Green Hornet's going to have a hand in it. Slow down. Axford's swinging off the road. Park under those trees ahead and stand by. I'll go closer and watch. Are you the reporter? Yeah, Sentinel. I blinked me lights twice, like you told me. All right, get out. I'll wait till I get me flash. Never mind your flash. Well, holy crow, I've got to have a look at you. Nix. I'll give it to you in the dark. Who are you? I'm not saying. But you have got dirt on Ferranti. Plenty. If he knew it, he'd have me rubbed out. All right, what is it? Well, Ferranti's stealing money from the Builders Association. 
He gets a salary of $10,000 a year, but he's building a house worth a hundred grand out of 648 Woodlawn. Oh, sure, friend, he'd have to register his name. Well, it's a dummy outfit. But it's his house, I tell you. All right, smart guy. Don't move. Same goes for you, too, Snoopy. It's Ferranti's men. They've got guns. That's right, Hanson. And we got orders to use them, too. So, you're shooting off your mouth. Well, it's just too bad. You can't get away with this. We're going to. And what's more, we're going to take care of you, too. A Snoopy reporter is just as bad as a squealer. <laughs> One fellow shot and the other fellow's knocked out. One of them ought to go to the hospital and the other to headquarters for questions. Yes, yes, I know all about that. We know what to do. Now pull yourself together and tell us what happened. Oh, sure. The whole 12 of them jumped me together. Pretty good story, Larry. Thank you, my public. Yes. Yes, sir. Boss wants you, Larry. Aha! Uh -huh. Did you check on the dope Axford got from Hanson? Yes, there's a house being built at that address on Woodlawn by a man named Breeden. I checked, but there's no tie between him and Ferrani. Yeah, but there must be. Yeah, I know there must be. But try and prove it. Who is this fellow named Breeden? Nobody in particular. Here's his prison address. Reading there? Yes. What name, please? Never mind. I'll announce myself. Which one of you guys is Reed? My name is Reed. Pretty young to be running a paper like the Sentinel. Yeah, ain't bad. My name is. I know your name, and I don't like it. What do you want here, Ferranti? Pretty snappy story you run about me this morning, wasn't it? I come up to tell you I don't like it, see? So you don't like it, eh? No. I run the association, see? And this stuff's bad for the public. They might think the association don't want me to be boss. They might think I'm running a racket. And you're not, of course. Of, of course not. The association made me boss, and they're going to keep me. Get this, Ferranti. You're a racketeer, and the Sentinel's going to prove it. We're going to pin you up in headlines for the whole city to see. You don't say. One of your gorillas shot a man the other night. That man's in the hospital. So what? So this. That man's going to talk, and plenty. You mean Hanson? Yes. What are you grinning about? The Sentinel won't get no story. Hanson's dead. He died a few minutes ago. You can't get a story from a dead man, can you? Hanson gone, that leaves Axford's word against Snipes. You know what a clever lawyer would do with Axford. You don't have to tell me. Sentinel's up a tree. Have the police released Snipe yet? Yes, Ferranti's lawyer showed up with a writ of habeas corpus. Well, Ferranti will get Snipe out of town fast. Which leaves us exactly nothing. Of course, there's Axford's theory. What, another one? No, the same one. Oh. Hello, Braden. This is the Green Hornet. Hornet. Why, what do you want with me? I know all about the game you're playing with Ferranti. Why, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. And I'm going to cut in. You're going to sell me that house. Cheap. Sell it to you? Why, you're crazy. Ferranti'd kill me. I've made up my mind, Breeden. I'll be seeing you. Got the bill of sale ready? Yes, sir. Right, keep your gloves on so there won't be any fingerprints on it. All right, let's go. Where to? 
Randy's office. I learned about him today. He'll be there. See, today was payday for Ferrandi. That's Ferrandi's office where the light is. He's due for a surprise. Are you sure you put a light charge in the gas gun? Yes, sir. It will knock a person out for a few moments only. Good. Wait here. You're taking a big chance grabbing association funds. Quit you worrying. Nobody checks up on me. I got everything my own way. Could even get away with murder on this job. Yeah? This is for Eddie. Didn't I tell you not to call me? You know what the Sentinel's trying to prove? You want to fix it for him? I had to call you. The Green Hornet phoned me a little while ago. The Green Hornet? Yes. Wanted me to play ball with him. Oh. So the Hornet wanted you to join up with him, eh? Well, get this, Breeden. That house belongs to me and you work for me, understand? So don't try any funny business or it'll be curtains. What is this? No guy in a mask is gonna... Careful! What do you want? That money. Belongs to the association. That didn't stop you from taking it. Killed him! No, I haven't. He's only gassed. Get back. I made a little deal with Breeden. And I don't want any interference. Breeden and Hornet. By the time Ferranti comes to, everything will be settled. Now put the rest of that money in the bag and hurry. Ferranti's getting off easy. He's not only a racketeer and a murderer, but he's wrecking an association of honest working men, undermining its morale, murdering those who protest. Don't try to follow me, or you'll get what he did. Money is in that bag? Yes. I'd like to turn it over to charity, but it belongs to the Builders Association. The best way to get it back to them is to carry out our plan. Then we will go to Mr. Breeden's? Yes, quickly. No, it's no trick, officer. The Hornet said he'd be here. Yes, that's right. Well, hurry, please. Who's there? Open up, Breeden. Who is it? I've come from Ferranti. Ferranti? Oh, oh, yes, just a second. Hornet. I said I'd be seeing you. You didn't, don't need that gun. Listen. You listen. Remember what I told you? I can't play ball with you, Hornet. For that, they'd skin me alive. Breeden and the Hornet are working together. Breeden's double-crossed you. I'll fix that rat. But, but what about the Hornet? I'll fix him, too. You said something about the house. I'm going to buy it. You can't do that. It's cr It's Ferranti's. Who did you start to say? Ferranti. He sunk dough in it. The Sentinel said it was Ferranti's, but he denied it. I can't help that. Hello, hello. Oh, sure, he's not in there, and he don't answer just when I need him most. Uh, who are you calling? Reed. For what? Well, I just had word from headquarters. Breeden's called the police. Breeden? Why? The Green Hornet's going to call on him. Then what are you standing here for? Well, I... Why don't you go out there and cover it? Well, I... I you I flat-footed imitation of a reporter! Get going! Yes. Well, who does the house belong to? Ferranti. I don't believe you. It's true. I'm acting as his cover-up, so the law won't grab him for using association funds. Well, from now on, you're acting for me. I've got a bill of sale with me, and you're going to sign it. Why do you keep watching that clock? I was just looking. You're trying to pull a fast one. I'm not. Honest. Open it. Inside, Chisler. Ferranti! I, I thought it was the cops. You and the Hornet, eh? Pulling a fast one. Well, I'm gonna get him, too. Where is he? 
He's not here. I didn't but that. It's my dough, ain't it? I couldn't help it. He made me. He had a gun. What do you think this is? A water pistol? All I know is you and the Hornet crossed me up. Well, now I'm going to... Hold it, Ferrandi. It's a slippery one. Now, here's what we better do. Help me get him out of here. We can't go that way. The police are in front. Where's Ferrandi's car? In back, behind the garage. We'll take him out that way. I'll go in first and run him out, and you'll be watching for him. Okay, Irish. Get going. Where is he? Are you an officer? I'm as good as one. Where well, you is... came just in time. Ferranti tried to shoot me. Ferranti? This driveway, which goes past the front of the house, is the only way out. You try to draw off the police while I make my getaway. Ferranti's been stealing association funds. I can prove it. I can prove the Hanson murder, too. Ferranti planned it. Holy oh, crow, why didn't you say that before when I asked you? Because my life wasn't in danger then, but now it is. The Hornet's car. You must have got away from Axford. Suffering snakes the green hornet. I was forgetting all about him. You wait here till I come back. Hornet, where is he? That's what we want to know. Wait a minute. I got a prisoner in there by the name of Breeden. Hold him for me. You follow the hernet. I'll come after you in my own car.
we want to know. There he goes. Oh, wait a minute. I got a prisoner in there by the name of Breeden. Hold him for me. You follow the hundred. I'll come after you in my own car. <laughs> Finish of the Green Hornet. There's a reward offered for his capture. Sure, and I'm collecting it. That's not the Green Hornet, that's Ferranti, boss of the Builders Association. And he's dead. By golly, the hundred chair someplace. I seen him driving the car. <laughs> By golly, but that's the hundred stealing me new car. A oh, beautiful car. Say, that was the Green Hornet, all right. Here's a seal. Climb in, we'll get him. Get him? With him driving my car? Sure, we haven't got a chance. You think uh, Ferranti could have been head of the crime syndicate? No, I'm sure he's not. He's taking his orders from someone higher up. Look, I found this in his pocket. Who is this Krogan? I don't know, but I think the Sentinel could find out if someone sent it an anonymous letter. I understand. Was this in the mail case? No, Mr. Reed. A boy delivered it. I asked him to wait, but he ran out. I think they should read international, not national. International Enterprises is a big concern. Send Lowry in to me, and then get me International's phone number. Yes, sir. Well, oh, Chief, we're in the clear. Have you seen Breeden? Yes, he'll not involve us. He'll stick to his story and blame everything on Ferranti. Good. Then we've nothing to fear from the police or the press. Mr. Britt Reed of the Sentinel on the phone. Hold it a minute. You can't talk to him. I think it better. If you don't, he'll wonder why. You're right. We're in the clear on this Ferranti business. Hello, Reed. Krogan speaking. Yes, Krogan. The Sentinel is running a series of articles on local industries. We'd like to have an interview with you. Certainly, Reed. I'd be glad to cooperate. Why not come for the interview yourself? Well, thank you very much. I'd, li I'd like to meet you, but uh, if I can't come, I'll send one of my best men, Mr. Lowry. All right. Goodbye. You need to know how good I am, boss. You'll have to prove how good you are on this job. If this anonymous letter means anything, there's a connection between Krogan and the crime syndicate. Suffering snakes. Maybe Krogan's the Green Hornet. Let me talk to him. Sure, I've seen the Hornet so often, I know just what he looks like behind the mask. I'm afraid Krogan isn't the Hornet, Michael. And we'll let Lowry do the talking. Oh, but I've seen him so many times. All right. You've also seen the members of the crime syndicate. Now, while he's in Krogan's office, you watch the building. If any of those men come out... I'll nab the spalpeens. You'll do nothing of the kind. You'll trail them. 
Find out where they go and report to me. Now, on your way, both of you. Oh, I you. You heard him. I'll bounce a knuckle off your skull. I have a strong suspicion that the Sentinel has discovered something connecting international enterprises with our syndicate. Sure, and when Reed starts anything, he never quits. If Reed suspects us, he'll have the building watched. Yeah, and he and his reporters know me and some of the other men by sight. That's what I'm getting at. Stay away from this building. Communicate with me through Kane's office. Now clear out before that reporter gets here. That's the building over there. Suffering snakes. What's the matter? You get punching? There's one of them now. Go ahead, follow him. Make sure he don't spot you. You're telling me, a veteran sleuth. You're young, smart Alec. Reed was here if he's coming. Mr. Lowry of the Sentinel see you. Lowry, I thought so. Reed is too cagey to come himself. You gonna let this reporter get away? Of course. He won't get anything from me. Keep undercover. Send Mr. Lowry in. Mr. Krogan? Mr. Lowry? Hmm. Alone? Why, yes, why? I thought Mr. Reed might come with you. Mr. Reed was unable to come. He's busy with the district attorney about this Ferranti case. I see. Well, what can we do for you? Now, my paper would like to know all about international enterprises. Now's our chance to get him. We've got to beat it. Well, that's fine, Mr. Krogan. I had no idea your company was connected with so many industries. No, we're quite a concern. Business is increasing every day, and we give our customers a fair return on their investment. I'm sure you do. Oh, by the way, your company does quite a bit of construction work. Do you have any labor troubles? Labor troubles? Yes, your company employs so many men, I thought maybe you might have bumped up against Ferrani and some of his activities. Ferrani was intimidating and robbing the men of the association. So I understand. But I never heard of Ferrani until your newspaper started his campaign against him. Well, thanks for the interview, Mr. Krogan. You've been a lot of help. Think they've got anything? I don't know. I wonder why he brought up the name of Ferrani. I think this investigation's liable to be dangerous? I think ahead, Franks. That's why I'm head of this syndicate. And I think it's time we change the base of our operations to some other city. You told the others? No, I've chosen you for my confidant, because you have the keenest brain of any of my followers. Cheap was. I'm glad you got confidence in me. To show you how much I trust you, I'm going to let you in on a secret. For the past two months, I've had Kane quietly disposing of securities. Practically all the resources of the syndicate have been turned into cash, and it's in that safe. Yeah, but if kane has been selling this stuff, he must... Oh, you overestimate Kane's intelligence. I gave him a plausible reason for selling, and he suspects nothing. Tower and some of the others are outside. Send them in. Hello, man. What's up? Plenty. I gotta get in touch with the chief right away. Hello, Krogan. You were right. Reed did have the building watch. Mike Axford tailed us and... No, we didn't get him. The police interfered. All right. Keep away from this building. I'll communicate with you through Kane. One of Reed's men spotted Tower leaving here. That means that you and I'll have to clear out tonight. Tonight? Yes. But... Go to Spike. Get him to prepare a time bomb at once. A time bomb? He'll be placed in that safe. We'll blow up the office. And I will appear to have been robbed and put out of the way. If the chief's in danger, we ought to do something. 
Don't worry about the chief. We're the ones that are in danger. Krogan means to run out on all of you. Run out? We're not declaring a dividend. What do you mean? Some time ago, he came to me with a cock and bull story about accumulating a lot of money for a big enterprise. Since then, he's been turning everything into cash. Why, that double crossing. And I suppose he banked it in his personal account. No, he'd want the money where he could put his hands on it in a hurry. Unless I miss my guess, he's got over a half a million dollars in his office safe right now. In his office safe, eh? Why, I can open that box easier than you can open a can of sardines. We're getting that money tonight. Yeah, but Krogan may be there. It'll be just fine. Come on. If we can believe Krogan, his business is on the up and up. He's even willing to have his books examined. I'd say we made a wrong guess if it wasn't for the guy that Axford is trailing. Well, that man could have been in the building and still had nothing to do with Krogan. We'll have to wait till Axford reports. You were right, Reed. Krogan's our man. Send a load of cops. How'd you trail that guy? I trailed him into an alley. Like a bloodhound, I was on his track. And when I come out the other end, he vanished like a spook. <laughs> and you used to be a cop. I... <laughs> <laughs> Cato, Mr. Axford is asleep. Good. He might decide to do something on his own and spoil our plans. Lock the door. Krogan is the head of the syndicate, Mr. Britt? That's something for the Green Hornet to find out. If Krogan isn't the man, he knows who is. with the others? Never divide unless you have to. I'm right about not dividing, don't you, Franks? Absolutely right, Krogan. <coughs> Drop that gun, Krogan. Green Hornet. Indulging in a little private murder, eh, Krogan? Get back to your desk. What do you want? The head of the crime syndicate. And I think I've got him at last. You've guessed right, Hornet. I am the head. And you're here for a cut-in. But you'll have to talk fast. What's the rush? I'm leaving here in five minutes to catch the China Clipper. I want more than a cut-in. All right. What is it? A written statement listing all your associates. There's half a million in those cases. I'll give you the statement you want, on one condition, that we split the money 50-50. But I've got to get away from here. Take up your pen. I'll dictate the terms. There's a light. Someone's up there. All the better. We know what to do with him. Sign it. Drop that gun, Hornet. So that's your game, Krogan. The partnership with the Green Hornet, leaving the rest of us to hold the bag. Get out quick, there's a bomb. Shut up, you. Keep him covered while I tear the Hornet's mask off.
Mr. Reed. Chief of Police Harding. How do you do, Mr. Reed? Hello, Chief. Glad to have you here. I hope it's not official business. Well, in a way, it is. Krogan's confession, which reached us anonymously, has enabled us to arrest most of his followers in the last 48 hours. Oh, that's splendid. Because of the important part played by the Sentinel in breaking up this crime ring, the mayor has empowered me to present to you this badge of honorary police commissioner. Well, now, hold on, Chief. I've done nothing but sit at my desk. This honor and badge of office should go to these two men who have been on the front line. Well, expert man of action here did all the fighting. Ah, go on, will you? <laughs> Chief, Lowry's right. Axford here is the battle-scarred veteran. Thanks, Reed. And you, Chief, I'll wear it with a great deal of pride and try to live up to all it stands for. Well, I still think the Green Hornet deserves the medal. And someday I'm going to pin one on him. Well, you... you uh, Casey, what do you mean by... <laughs>